Yeah. Record yet? Did you? Are you ready? Damn. Okay. Crazy. I didn't. I didn't see the record. I thought the record was up on mine. Here we go. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children and all ages, Zang with the first gift of the 2024. As far as we were recording, it is truly a year, a year of change. We here at Keep It a Buck, we always change shit up, and uh, you'll figure out the change for this episode. How is everybody doing on the podcast for the first part of 2024? We have a special guest with us as well, but first we must talk about the hosts that always do the most. Bezos, how are you doing today? Mm. I'm muted. Like I'm muted. Like I'm doing well. Like doing fantastic, man. Great, great, uh, great weekend. Calm little weekend, you know. Tight Saw shit. my guys streaming all weekend. Y'all killed it. Right. Omar, how you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. It it feels it feels good to go third. <laughs> Dama, how you doing today? Um, doing absolutely marvelous. Ready to start this year off great. Have a good weekend, and you know. Today's the day where the Pistons get their fourth win. Mm. <laughs> Who they playing today? They're playing the Rockets. It's Thompson v. Thompson type of beef today. Can't wait. <laughs> and speaking of the Pistons, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have the one, the only, Kofi Y. Kofi, how are you doing today, my boy? I'm doing good. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. You know, it feels good after a win. I got my wing stop bag still here. I might frame it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> this this where we're at right now as a franchise man i'm telling you <laughs> four wings and wings i mean four wins and wings stop i love to hear that look man before we get into the hoops guys don't forget to you know subscribe to the channel not even not even just twitchers youtubers don't forget to subscribe to the channel you know we're on the road i want to hit 250k this year a lot mm. of you guys want to hit 3K, but I ain't going to lie. I'm crawl before you walker. I want to at least see 250. Um, mm. Definitely make sure you follow up to the channel. Now I'm talking to the Twitchers. Subscribe to all the hosts. We, we all have our Twitch. Uh, links in the description, maybe below. I don't know. I'm new to this, all right? But it's also been a new year. Real quick, before we get to the hoops, resolutions for 2024. Let's knock these out of the way. One hit of quitters, TKOs. One pod related, one personally related. Let's start this off. With the guests, man. And yours just don't have to be pod related, of course. But it's a 2024 resolution for you, my boy. I think my resolution is to do more podcast appearances. I feel like I often like stay out the way when it turns to content because I feel like I'm so like in my own silo of just like making TikToks, making YouTube videos, doing streams, doing all of that. I feel like I need to branch out more, like and be more visible to like communities that like interact and stuff. It's like, oh, Good to see like him interacting with like other cool creators that I like respect and all of that. So mm. I think that's my main resolution, like podcast wise and all that. So mm. it's interesting that you said that because a couple like pods back, we were talking about how like specifically in the NBA community, people for better or for worse, they just kind of stay in their own lanes and don't collaborate as much as other communities. But like that's what's holding a lot of like creators back from reaching another level is that yeah, lack exactly. of collaboration. So. And I'm and I'm the person I'm a person like I can't have a podcast, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like I can't like if someone if someone was like, Kofi, we need you to talk like three days a week for two hours on like everything. I think that's what I've had a podcast in the past, and that's like it mentally like it burned me out. So yeah. like I like guesting on podcasts where it feels like it's like okay, cool, we're out here. I can go at my own pace, do all that, and it's like it's like a good medium for me. So mm. that's dope. Okay. Uh, Donald. Um, oh, pod related. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Damn, what do I want to do more for the pod this year? What 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 goes to happen? I guess man, I, I, I I I'm tired of crawling. Uh, 300k. I wanna wanna I wanna hit 300k this year for the pod. That's probably my pod goal. Uh, 300k for the pod. And personally, hey man, I'm feeling left out. I wanna I wanna be a part of the 1k fan club. On, on Twitch, <laughs> I I just, I, at least at least one K. You know, I, I I can't be like your your bud TSO Sanat up there. You know, closed in on hey, this thing closed in on twenty ten K. It's on there, right? This thing growing like speed. I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm like him. Be like my other brothers. You know, my my C and B Mike over here. You know, oh my. I'm just gonna hit, just gonna hit the, 
Just want to hit one K, bro. I just want one of them. So that's my goal. Just, just that one K this year. Now, B Souls almost has three, but go ahead, keep going. Keep yep. going. Thank you, thank you for bringing two. that up. What the fuck? Oh my god! And, and you already almost had three. Crazy. <laughs> thank you for bringing that up. For me, um, with the pod, um, I'm just trying to be more inter- interactive with the community as a whole in the Discord, specifically, I guess, because uh, that's where our community is at. Um, but just more community driven things. I'm trying to, you know, have a proper award ceremony. Let's keep it a book award show by the end of the year. So I want to make sure I'm contributing on that front. And then outside of the pod, um, I'm trying to get to like a thousand average concurrent viewers on Twitch by the end of the year. That's the goal. That's the goal. So, yeah. Um, you said for your personal channel, a thousand? No, for from my personal stream. I feel it. A thousand. That's what's up. Yeah. Hell yeah. The the pod we raised the floor for the pod. I no no specific numbers, no specific anything's because I think that we get caught up in that sometimes. But raise the floor for the pod first. And foremost, brand deals, viewership, whether it's live or on the VODs, um, standards, the standards for the floor, or the floor standards, the standard of the floor, whatever. But raise the standards of the, or the floor for the pot, uh, just all overall. And then uh, putting fitness, something non content created, content creation, putting fitness back at like the forefront of my life. Because I ain't gonna lie, it's, it takes one year to get off track. And then it takes ten to get back. So I, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I hear that. I hear that for sure. Um, I'm not gonna lie. For me personally, I had to double check numbers. That's why I kept looking it down. For my personal, um, I know I'm getting the uh, I show sage now, but I actually want to go that route and um, blow up on TikTok. I think TikTok is low key my next play. Um, if the TikTok fans, the viewers can spiral in, then essentially they can result to more Twitch viewers. Because if anything, I feel like a lot of uh, keep it a, keep it a buck viewers then see my streams and they all, then they're like, "Yo, this nigga's not that bad." All right, I, I fuck with it, but I want to see if I can uh, appeal to entirely different communities and bring them over to my uh, Twitch channel as well. Um, obviously, you could argue that the little Mick and maybe 100K should be the answer. Either way, for the podcast. My goal by the end of 2024 is to dead the idea that the Discord is dead once and for all. I want, like, we've already been cooking in Discord. I've already been in Discord way more, <laughs> no. than, way more than once a week. But, and maybe I'm doing my, my boy Dom a favor because, my God, y'all be killing him. But I want to officially GG the idea that Discord is dead. But, um, but speaking of, speaking of dead things... We have a Pistons fan up here. Uh, we we got to we got to do it, man. Um, what what happened? What like because because you have at least two hosts up here that fully believe that you guys could fight for a playing spot, one hundred percent without a shadow of a doubt. You're speaking of one right now. Um, I thought that hell, Bezos thinks Cade's black Luca, and um, a Sir Thompson, one of the best defenders in basketball. There's many reasons why a lot of people thought the Pistons would not be, you know by far and away the worst team and they're not even like the spurs they're trying and they're yeah what what happened man so i i I like the k luca i call him luca light usually where Mm. i'm like hey if k and i've always been like Cade in space that's always that's all i've ever wanted but we don't have space on any of this like so this coming into the season you know winning 17 games getting the fifth pick and then we had a getting monty williams Everything was like, okay, what's going on? And then I think what really started the hope train was when Cade and Jalen Duren were like with Team USA. I think that was the main thing of them going viral. And it's like, there are times where it's like, they, them two look like the best players on the court at the time. Like, and it was like, oh, okay, they're getting that chemistry, they're doing whatever. And then uh, we start two and one. And then the absolute just breaks fall off. Right. And I think that with it's it started with Jalen Duran getting hurt, right? And then you yeah. start to really see the cracks in the worst constructed roster in the NBA. Like we I think it is the worst front court. Like as soon as Jalen Duran goes out, there was like you go into games being like, there's no way that we're winning anything. Cause if you have a competent big man, competent rim protector, a competent lob threat, it's over. 
Like it's over. It's a wrap. The game is over. So that was the whole like everybody had to be full strength and all the stars had to align. But the fact is there there's so much to unpack with this team, right? This team does not take a lot of threes. They do not make a lot of threes. They turn the ball over a lot. They foul a lot. Like, so it's not even like you guys have you guys have all had like bad teams that y'all root for and you're like this this is bad basketball but it, like you have a stretch where like this is bad basketball but there is at least something fun to like take out of the game where it's like oh someone hits a three we still down 15 but like look at that we still got like players like developing getting highlights it was just absolute sadness in every game yeah. watching and having having to go on twitter and read Cade cunningham draft class of 2021 20, discourse for like the first stretch being like mm -hmm. having to be like wait give that give this man you see how he's playing bro and then asar like the thing is is that i remember the trey young's rookie year where he would make like a fantastic play or fantastic pass and it would be to like alex lynn in the corner Right. And you're like, if that's a, if there's a shooter right there, that's a great play. That's an assist. And then Cade does the same thing, but it's a star Thompson in the corner and he's shooting like 16 percent from three. So it's like one of those things where it's like the potential assist. You just got to sub him out for like players that can shoot. But the players that can like shoot that are advertised to be able to shoot can't shoot. Like it's this is rough out here. <laughs> this yeah. is beyond ironic, bro. And I'm gonna let my other host cook here, but this is very ironic because me and Omar at least stayed up till like two in the morning, harping with the community that guys, and we'll talk about Monty in a second. But we're like, guys, I want you to understand we we are not absolving Monty Williams, but that roster that he's dealing with is pretty fucking bad. And so it's the it's ironic, the first frame one. 10 minutes into the recording, the first thing a Pistons fan says is that they have the worst roster in the league. Um, being said, I guess we could talk of uh, if there's one thing that could get you at least double your wins by the end of the season at this pace, right? Uh, what do you think that adjustment is needed for your Pistons? It does it have to be a roster move. Is it Monty Williams just getting better? Is it Monty getting the fuck out? What do you think the Pistons need to do to start winning more games? So I think the thing is, is that my I think a lot of Pistons fans, their anger is not with the players at all. I think it's like they they come in playing, trying their hardest, you know, and this losing for over like a two month span. That's got to be difficult for anybody. Like the last time they had won before this recent win, the World Series was still going on. Like that was before Halloween. Right. Dang. I went home. I went home on a flight, did Thanksgiving, then did Christmas. And the Pistons still hadn't won a game. Stop. Right. <laughs> And every every way I could spin this, every graphic. John Morant came back, went three and zero. Pistons had two wins total, like everything. I so, yeah, but the bad. thing is, is that, <laughs> that, that yeah, you see bad. every Pistons gra every Pistons graphic shows up. It's just like yo, I'm I'm out right. But I think the thing that scares me with this front office is that even if they do make a move, I'm scared it's gonna go down and make a move that's gonna be like a short term fix for a really long term problem. And it's going to be like, it's going to like delay the rebuild even more. Right. So I remember when Stan Van Gundy made the Blake Griffin trade and then was out the next year. And then Blake Griffin tries his best and then he gets bought out. So we don't even like, we're not able to flip him for anything. And then we're still on this thing. I don't want Troy Weaver to make like a trade like that where it's like we're giving up what little assets we have for a player that is probably going to leave soon after. Right. So I don't know. It's kind of cooked, man. It's kind of cooked. I, I do want to ask you real quick. Uh, my bad, Dom. Just real quick. During the losing streak, what was peak sadness? Because I, I would argue that before the streak ended, like it was, it was some good basketball being played. I'm where, not going to lie. Where do but. I start? <laughs> I, think, I think what happened was it was cool until that Wizards game. I think it was cool because we were losing, right? We were losing, and everybody was like, oh, tank bowl, tank bowl. Okay. If, and the Pistons, we, we were looking down the, the depth chart, look, looking at the schedule and being like, if there's one game, it's the Wizards. And then you lose that game by 19? That 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 was like, 19. oh, wow. this is." I was like, there, there are somehow levels to being a bottom dweller right now in terms of just like, <laughs> <laughs> yo. <laughs> They, they, the Wizards put it, dude. The Wizards put in, um, 
I didn't expect to see Pistons Wizards garbage time. That's what I'm saying. I didn't expect to see like their bench. Like the Wizards emptied their bench. And I was like, yeah, that's that's a new low for me, man. <laughs> that's I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> the Utah game was pretty bad, man. I ain't gonna lie. The timeline was very optimistic on y'all winning against the Utah Jazz with all those injuries. And when y'all mm. couldn't pull that off, that's when it got serious to me. Like the losing streak, I'm like, oh God. Yep. But, you saw the Jazz injury report and you're like, hey, no Lori. Yeah, no Clarkson, no Clarkson, no, no, no THT. Like, jeez, bro. I don't even think the coach play. I don't think the coach coached that game. I ain't going to. You. No funny <laughs> shit. No funny For shit. Real. Damo, what were you gonna say? Um, I was gonna ask because uh, you said you feel like if they do make a move, it's gonna be a short term game for a long term like failure and mess up the rebuild. I mean, me being the, I, I will say honestly, this summer I was the biggest Pistons advocate. I damn playing i said y'all were 41 team i said this team mm. is a this team might be a 41 team i had y'all on the same boat as the rockets in terms of y'all had vets you had young guys mm. that were supposed to take step i and the usa thing definitely did it too seeing Cade and Jalen duran link up and they really looked that great amongst all the good talent on that court i was like yeah that these guys got it they're same, literally same pace as the rockets is my frame of mind do you think that if y'all do make a move and I'm a person since y'all drafted Jay, uh, Jaden Ivey said that was a that wasn't a move for y'all. I don't see him and Cade working together. So if y'all move some of these guys that kind of where well, you're stagnant at, because I feel like y'all stagnant at the center spot. Uh, Isaiah Stewart obviously isn't a power forward. Uh, nope. He plays too similarly or has to do some of the same things that J- uh, Jalen Duran has to do. And then off the bench you have Marvin Bagley and James Wiseman who essentially again do some of the same stuff. Like, they're now them stretching the floor for a pro. They're rim runners, and they're not the best rim protectors. So, it, 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 lack of space and all that. If you move off of, say, a Stewart and Bagley, because I'm I'm not too mad at Wiseman, uh, but Stewart and Bagley, and you move off of Jay and Ivy, let's say you get, I'm not going to say Zach Levine, but you add some vets that are locked in for a year or two. You don't feel like that would, because y'all still have y'all picked. Obviously, y'all, it was protected, but being – finish the season five and whatever you're going to obviously retain that pick so retaining the pick and being able to get a a potential top five player this year add that with getting vets and whatever vets you can get in terms of a trade and trading some of these young guys away you don't feel that would set you up long term to be better and kind of because i don't know i don't feel like y'all should still be rebuilding i I think y'all should y'all have y'all poor i feel like y'all have y'all a strong base I think so. The owner, so Tom Gore has recently talked to the press, and the quote he was like, We were thinking about a play in spot and like playoff play, we were thinking about that this year. However, their free agent activity doesn't really like line up with that, right? Mm-hmm. So, if you look at so now, like now that after this losing streak, I'm looking back at what the Rockets did, and I know we clowned the Fred Van Vliet contract, I know we like Dylan Brooks for for. 80 i think it was four years 80 or something like that Mm -hmm. i'm looking back now and i'm like yeah that i would have liked for us to be more active on the free agent trail and like get like cam johnson was coming up in our on like people's like wish lists and all that stuff but i the feels like it's sad that it shouldn't take 28 straight losses for the for for front office to be like oh maybe we should do something like this team is fundamentally broken there's Mm -hmm. like there's overlap like you, like you said, there's player to player overlap that doesn't make sense, and it also like the Sadiq Bay for Wiseman trade looks worse every day because well, of the overlap mm, with like with like yeah. with like Bagley and Wiseman. Bagley's getting like coached like DNP coaches decisions right now, and he's been like statistically better than James Wiseman. So it's sometimes it's like I can't blame Monty Williams. Monty Williams is like, but then there's part of me that's like Monty Williams is also not helping his case here, but also I like it's like a cycle of being like. All right, but he hasn't been given. He's like he's given up. He's been given a puzzle, but pieces are missing. And like there's pieces from another puzzle that just don't fit. Like it just it's just really weird to just like look at it and be like, I want to blame Monty, but I know that you just have not been put in a position to really succeed right now. Honestly, well, we got twenty pieces to our puzzle because Andrew Sullivan with twenty f- gifted. Andrew Sullivan, appreciate the fuck out of you, my boy. Yeah, shout out to Andrew for the twenty gifted, by the way. Big Drew, big Drew in the building. I, oh I, I do want to, I do want to say here, because, and maybe this is just, I, I understand why, especially as like a Pistons fan, you want to see people win or whatever the case may be. What is the fascination with getting W's right now? Like, 
at the end of the day, even if let's say y'all were even semi good, semi competent, semi all this stuff like that, you max out at potential play in. Like it, these people at their peak powers, not like what we said, like Cade truly becoming Luca, but just peak powers for a year three Cade Cunningham, a year three Jaden, you know, year whatever these guys are in, peak powers potentially playing potentially you know winning a game but truly like not making it out the first round if all this is at the at the cost of like developing more building better and this is probably in the reference of like getting a fred van vliet or a dylan brooks i honestly don't think it's worth it because i'm gonna be honest with you all the things that are happening with the rockets are great and maybe some eggs got to be you know lost when this transition but like loki i feel like Jalen green is lost down in houston like he doesn't know what the fuck is going on he's trying to make the best out of whatever situation but he's lost what's the fascination with winning right now i think the fact i think the fascination isn't with winning i think it's with how we are losing it's like i think for me i came in here like people would ask like what your position what your um predictions for wins i'm like i don't really care about the win loss total right this year i want to i just want these players to be better then what they like are coming like starting into the season then by the end of the season i'm like are you developing good habits are you like being able to like be like oh adjusting to the nba or whatever whatnot or like finding your role and it feels like that wasn't there for a while because now and it feels like and i feel like this is when my frustration with monty williams is because we've had 17 different starting lineups in 32 games like players are getting the the first month where it was like Killian Hayes was starting and Pistons fans were like we want we want Ivy Wise Killian Hayes playing off ball to Cade Cunningham all of that why are we starting two bigs why is Wiseman in the rotation and then the first couple of like weeks it was like seeing how good Asar was defensively but he was hitting the side of the backboard more often from the corner than like hitting the actual rim yeah. so it was yeah. like so that kind of that was kind of like dude i i'm getting sidetracked here but asar thompson with a just a corner three just like if he gets that like i would be like he's he becomes an infinitely better help on the pistons offensively but i digress um but i think it's just so much that it's like these players they're losing, and it feels like they were like during this losing streak, they were not developing like any good habits or like not learning from their mistakes. Like they were the turnovers, the lackadaisical turnovers is just like it's just like wild to like see a team and be like be in games for the fourth quarter and then like one run is just gone, and then their body language gets de- defeated and all that stuff. So I, I think it's I think it's just how we're losing, where it's like these are it's just excruciating and like it's year four. It's year four of us hitting the absolute reset button, and we're still here. Like, I feel like there should be a, a, a little bit of a trend upwards. You know, that's, I think that's the more disappointing part out of all of it. Can I ask with the Pistons? Because going into the season, when start at the start of the season, y'all had relatively a lot of injuries. I want to say at the start of the year yep. was Mon- Mon- Monty Mer- Morris, a guy I routinely bring up that I think will be able to help at least bring veteran guards like tendencies to the team and we're helping these late game situations where y'all do give up runs or just the offense stagnates after a timeout and it's a close game because i feel like y'all lost the most close games in the nba so far it's crazy but monte morris is out bogdan was out uh uh, bogdanovich was out at the beginning of the season um i want to say joe harris mentally is injured i don't know why he doesn't play basketball mentally joe harris is hurt um just any vets y'all had weren't available i want to say uh alec burks was there at first they had a period where he got hurt for a bit and then came back. Do you feel like that is the reason that y'all seen so many lineups as, as the Pistons? Because 70 star lineups, I mean, if you got this many injuries and this much stagnation and not knowing what to do, like, wouldn't a mixture of lineups be the key? Because it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense. If y'all went 20 straight games and you know, y'all only had two starting lineups, I feel like we would still be in this conversation like, yo, this man Monty, he's a bum. He, he's not doing anything with these lineups. He's playing the I same guy. Conversation I, gets worse than my opinion. I, I think there's a part. I think there's a part of that that is true, where it's like the people that were injured do affect the starting lineups. But however, there were some starting lineup decisions that just really shocked people. Whether it was like picking up Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox didn't start the season on the team. Picking up Kevin Knox and giving him the start over Jaden before Jaden Ivey started 
like a, it like really annoyed Pistons fans because we were like, what is what is happening here? And then we've been begging for the two big lineup, but Monty Williams is just obsessed with playing Isaiah Stewart at the four, where it's like, let's try something. Like it's just, it's Monty Williams trying new stuff, but it's not the new stuff that like we want him to try, <laughs> if that makes sense. Where it's like, and then the line, the the like he plays ten people, like it's AAU, you know, the all bench lineups are painful. That is the most painful part of like the Detroit first five. The Detroit first five, you see in the first quarter, he puts that bench in. And it's an instant like 10-0 run every time. Like, and I know that we, we never should go. I I don't I don't like plus minus as a stat like that. I don't think it really tells a whole story. But mm -hmm. when it's that drastic, I feel like it, it's like okay, this bench here, Alec Burks is minus 25. Why is he playing 30 minutes? Like it, and stuff like that, where the rotations and like it doesn't feel like there's any stability even with the people that have been here this whole time where it's like sometimes he'll play sasser and then sasser will get a dmp sometimes Asar will play 20 30 minutes and then in other games he'll play eight and then like sometimes it, it's just like all over here and i'm just like what is and again it goes back to the fact that like this roster is terrible but mm -hmm. and he's trying to like make make something happen but there's not really anything to like do with it but also the stuff that we would want to ask where it was like hey can we get three like even people that could like be a f any semblance of a floor spacing threat can we do like the luca roster build or do like the trace the luca roster lineup where it's like there's one guy three floor spacers lob threat yeah can we do that we kind of can't because it's isaiah livers and alec burks have been horrendous not too much like, on Isaiah. Sure. Not too much on Isaiah. Not, not not too much. Too, but like they they have been struggling from the shot, like from three, and that like also like makes it a little bit frustrating as well. So sounds like sounds like you guys definitely need to make a couple of trades. We have a trade to talk about uh, a tr a Woj bomb bullet. Yeah, sparkle, I ain't gonna lie. But before we do that, <laughs> but before we talk about that, Persian, thank you for hitting the sub goal. We have finally hit the 1K mark for the first time in 2024. Thank you, hey. Persian. Yes, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now, ladies and gentlemen, said Woj bomb, burner, uh, bullet. Eh, again, I ain't gonna lie, Sparkle. And I'm pulling it up right now, but a team that did make a couple of moves. That that a lot of people were expecting the Raptors moved the asset. They moved OG. The the OG talks were getting up there with the Miles Turner prime conversations. They were getting up there with Derek White kind of conversations all right now. But I ain't gonna lie. I think we all did not expect this team to be the people that get him. Let me just pull this up right now. One second. Sorry about that. I swear I'm rusty. <laughs> Gotta give me some time here. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. The Woj Bomb of 2024. Really late 2023. Woj Bomb. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah Unironic story about this. I'm going to start off this segment here. The Toronto Raptors are finalizing a trade to send OG Ananubi, Ananubi to the New York Knicks for a package, including Emmanuel Quickly, RJ Barrett, and draft considerations. Now, I'll do my job of, you know, Finding out exactly what those draft considerations were. If one of my hosts already have that, thank God, because I don't feel like looking that shit up. But off the dome, not gonna lie, I never expected RJ Barrett to be gone. I, I, I'm just, I thought the Knicks were uh, just like completely behind RJ. I thought you they think, were. You think he's their Marcus Smart? Is that what you saying? Like, yeah, at this point, <laughs> this point, hype shit. Well, and I'll admit, Marcus Smart got traded. So. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough Marcus Martin did get traded I'll say this admittingly you can call me out for not watching the most Knicks games because outside of playback I'll be blunt I haven't seen that it's literally been playback that's it outside of that I haven't been seen, watching Knicks games but damn I, I, I just I just never saw that coming I think it's like I don't know what it does for either team now because RJ Barrett yeah I guess he has um more scoring potential more upside maybe but OG's more like a win now player. But the thing is, are they just like, ugh, fuck you, Becky Hammond? Because now you're kind of trying to tell me that you have Julius Randle, you have Jalen Brunson, you're gonna put OG next to him and try to win now. So I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. But um either way, I just want to point out that this Vogue bomb had a lot of hype. And this is a hater take out of me. 
A lot of hype for for some mid bomb. Sage, you're you're a fool. Mid bomb, bro. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're you're a fool because you don't know this. And I think this is clear as day. B Souls will agree with me. Um, OG and Anobi can guard Nikola Jokic. I, yes, I know. Sir. Oh my god! I, you don't know about OG for real, man. I ain't gonna lie. I learned a lot about up. OG this weekend. Yeah, he really is that guy. And can, I think you need to acknowledge that, man. He can he can guard Joel Embiid. <laughs> uh, he can guard <laughs> John Morant. Dog. He, Victor Wimbyama. He, he will take Bro. Jokic out the game and make him not exist verbatim. There Bro, is not I a switch he's run from ever. <laughs> Man, Y'all sound like this sounds like what Masai would say in the trade negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> trust me, trust me. Just, just believe all you need to give up for this hell of a guy, R.J. Barrett, yeah. Man, let me explain something, bro. <laughs> let me explain something. This is the truest story, bro, and it's not the most home run funny story, but I'm streaming. I think we're we're watching a SpongeBob Christmas special, some shit like that, playing a drinking game. I look to the left. I'm, I'm like a good couple shots in. Woj bomb, Woj bomb, Woj bomb. I'm like, what the fuck happened, okay? Woj bomb, boom. I ain't gonna lie. I log in on Twitter. When I seen a picture of OG and a newbie in mix. <laughs> Man, I, I ain't gonna lie. I wanted, I, I wanted, ooh, I was mad, bro. I'm like, all right, bro, really? <laughs> Y'all niggas always bomb that. Like, that. that's not even gas. That's not even motion for real. But um, obviously, <laughs> ma- obviously, maybe we're um un- over-hating on the play. Damo, how do you feel about OG and Anobi to the Knicks or RJ Barrett to the Raptors? <clears throat> I think it's um, mid height, but how do you feel? My first initial thought, when I seen that trade, seeing all it entailed was the Knicks get fleeced. The Knicks got fleeced if they don't mm-hmm. resign OG because I don't think OG is on a deal. I don't think he's on a long term deal. I, I think I thought OG was coming off the books this year. Is he an expiring? So, you didn't think he probably saw say, now? Come on. I'm gonna say I think I don't think he's expiring. I, 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 from my belief, I thought he was expiring. So please check with me. But if he's an expiring deal, if, so again, if they don't resign OG. They got fleeced because RJ is on a longer deal. I, I they recently inked RJ not too long ago, so RJ's on a longer deal. You gave up who uh RJ animated you quickly, who they didn't want to pay quickly. That's fine, but you still gave up two Nick faithfuls. The Nick fans was believing in them too, so you gave up two fit. I would say fan favorites more so, more so quickly than RJ. It's mixed barrel with RJ, but still for OG, if he walks, you got fleeced. Now, if y'all resign OG personally, I see this is a win-win. I like this trade. I don't think it – obviously, it's not the biggest it, – it, it's not Tyrese for Sabonis. It's not like that. But it definitely is a win-win for both teams. The Knicks are obviously showing you, like, A, this is our team. We're going to get by on defense. Brunson's our guy. Randall was our other guy. And we just needed that official number three. RJ was not it. I think RJ was at number three. I'm glad they came to this conclusion. Rather than five, six more years down the line, and he really does like Marcus Smart of New York. So I'm glad that they finally decided, hey, we're done with them. That's good. <laughs> RJ gets to go home. He gets to be the real the the Toronto native, the Canada native. He gets to go save Canada for all I fucking care. He can I do like their care. Marcus Smart, right? Well, he, was, oh, he can go home. <laughs> he, he can he can go do it for the land, Canada. This is for you type shit. Like I love I'm it. At, I saw him at the I saw him at the press conference today. I ain't never seen RJ Barrett with two diamond earrings in his oh, ear a day of my life. He had the big diamonds him, on. <laughs> he had a Rolex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's cheating. Big fish in a small pond type shit. Oh, yeah. Nah. I, just <laughs> personally though, I, I really like the trade for the Raptors more than the Knicks, if I just had to pick one. Um, like we've been talking about, I think uh Toronto gets their Marcus Smart and RJ Barrett, man. Hometown kid goes home. I think he's really going to be Marcus a Smart very, isn't very... from Boston. All right. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying that's why he's their Marcus Smart. But I'm saying no. that adds to it. That adds to but it. But you mean, but you, well, I think what you, like, what you mean was, like, when they traded for Przingis, like, Celtics fans were, like, more sad about Marcus Smart leaving than more happy about them getting Porzingis for a little bit. Yeah, like, for like, a little I, bit. I think where, like, <laughs> we saw like, Porzingis on the floor. It was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the no, way, but yeah. you keep going, I want to thank Ro- Root Berto with the five. Root Berto with the five. We saw that, my boy. Good see you. 
Um, yeah, I like RJ Barrett going to Toronto, and I really like Emmanuel quickly, in my opinion. I think that's the that's the biggest part for me for the Raptors. I think we've been asking for the Raptors to blow it up and find some sort of young core um, to build around. And with him and Scotty Barnes, um, it's a step in the right direction. And, uh, you know, with everything going on, I do think um, they're still looking to trade um, Pascal Siakam. So this is like one move that's not the final move. But once every, all the moves play out, I think the vision will be more clear for the Raptors. And then for the Knicks, hey, listen, when they committed to Jalen Brunson and, and Julius Randle, I never expected championship contenders, but I did expect like a, a playoff contending team that's going to give some joy to New York Knicks fans. And, um, you know, I like that they're doubling down on that. You know what I'm saying? We, we had the same conversation about the Kings. Um, yo, let's just get some winning basketball for this franchise because it's been a long time since they've received it. Hey, let's just let's just maximize what we got. And I do think um, OG for them um, gives them more. I think it gives them a stronger lineup, but I really do think they're going to miss Emmanuel quickly off the bench, though. So. Yeah. I, I heavily agree there. I, I agree with the sentiment going around this is a win-win as long as the Raptors aren't done. <laughs> if, the, if the Raptors stop making moves and they're like, all right, now that we're talking Barnes, Siakam, RJ, rings. No, no not at no, all. You, not even remotely. You get the Photoshop where it's like, who's stopping this team? And it's like. Y- yeah, like, f- it- <laughs> like please. I don't want to see your TikTok edits. I don't, I don't want to see nothing of this trio. Spoiler alert. It's not this one right here. Um, Keep making moves. I heard something about uh, Siakam to Dallas. I don't know if I like that. Um, I don't like I don't like that at all. Basically, that was convincing me to from, just. Who are they getting this? from Dallas? Grant, what? What? <laughs> no, I'm always officially convinced me to just jump the gun and say, "Yo, that shit ass." I was, I was just, I was just going out there. I heard about Dallas, Dwight like, Powell. Somebody yeah. Dwight Powell and Derek Lively. Like, what are you? What are you about to get? What are you about to get? Yeah. Derek Jones Jr. Get ready to learn Niggas Toronto, like buddy. Josh Green. <laughs> Niggas like Josh Green, Tim Hardaway, <laughs> shit like that. I was like a Jaden Hardy. Nah, don't, nah, don't sleep on, don't sleep on Tim Hardaway though. Don't do that now. Nah. <laughs> hey, don't do it. Hey, fair enough, man. But I don't know. I wasn't a fan of it either, Domo. I was just saying, um, maybe not to Dallas. In fact, please not to Dallas. I don't even know if don't Dallas. Have any team you know, Dallas. Dallas. You know, just not Dallas. But um, <laughs> definitely um, don't stop. I want the Raptors at the deadline to be a very active team. Hell, maybe with the Pistons. But uh, in general, <laughs> definitely uh, make another. T- oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about Pascal going to the Pistons? Just, Yo, just he, had a, he had a great tryout uh, last game. That man could not miss. I feel like that's going to trick Troy Weaver, bro. <laughs> no, like, I, that's a th- that's the thing where it's like I would be I would be like this is where I am. I would be happy. I'd be like okay, that's cool. But like I don't want Troy Weaver making another move. Like I want him gone. Like that's the thing. It's like I feel it feels like so directionless as like a what are we doing here? So like that kind of move would it would like kind of stream of like. Not desperation a little bit, but it would feel like a panic move. I feel like if it's it depending depending on what he's given up, it would feel mm-hmm. like a panic move to me. I'd be like, okay, like we're the, in the same place. I feel like the only thing that would make sense because now that they have unless they move Schroeder with Siakam, I don't think they're gonna give up any guards in Detroit. So now we're looking at Isaiah Stewart. You trading beef stew and a bunch of bitch Damn, players. you hate Isaiah Stewart. I do, but dog. I'm saying no, no, no. But I'm saying, in, in all actuality, to get Siakam there, I think Siakam might get seasoned in the surgery. Like, why? I don't know why would Siakam? Why would Siakam play in that situation? He's already like, what? That's crazy. Like, I'm like season ending. <laughs> ah, my knee. Ah, you know what? <laughs> Wait, let's, let's, let's drain uh, my knee real quick. Let's let's <laughs> let's, cool. let's let's investigate this because you're the first person that's ever said this, Kofi. Troy Weaver. You think Troy Weaver's the problem? Yeah, that is new. I like that actually. Really, I, I think I think this entire front office just it, it's been some pu- there have been puzzling moves. Mm-hmm. Whether it's there's been puzzling moves and the like free agent inactivity. Troy Weaver wrote a letter to the fans at the end of last season, being like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna like I'm sorry, is this a rebuild? I know it's a tough time." And then in free agency, turns around and gets Joe Harris and Monty Morris. Right. And Joe Harris is out of the rotation. Like this is like this was the the promise afterwards. Right. And now you're just like, okay, what is happening here? And the wise the Wiseman trade, I'm like, that whole thing where it 
we were happy for a little bit where it's like because Troy like I think what Troy likes to do is he likes to like bargain bin where it's like hey you were you have all this potential your top your number two pick it didn't work out in this situation maybe it'll work out for us like he, that's I think that that's his mentality because he knows that like free agency he hasn't really made a big free agency splash I feel like that's his thing but like Sadiq Bay getting traded like and this is after he like put up like 51 against the Warriors and then it was like oh Sadiq Bay's gone and you're like what are we but then you look back and you're like we have Marvin Bagley already like what are we like what are we doing here and it was painful in summer league watching it was watching James Wiseman and Marvin Bagley like shooting threes and like try to be like oh I could be the stretch four and then everybody's like mm, I don't think that's I don't think either of y'all got it right that like that. <laughs> so it, it's a real it's a real puzzling. The roster construction is puzzling. That's what I'm that's where I'm like Troy. Also, the the draft picks, Killian Hayes, Isaiah Stewart, like the draft picks haven't really panned out the way that we would Damn. like, you know. And I think that the Cade Cade, of course, number one, home run. Love that. Jaden Ivey, number five. I do love that. I think it was either like Pistons fans either wanted Murray or Ivy fine with that um 17 wins getting the fifth pick getting the sar i do like a sar the pistons do have a wing problem right now like there are no wings on this team like really mm -hmm. like kevin knox at the four is like that was our like okay I feel like any like that. <laughs> he ain't got words. I, I don't. Nah, yeah, that's <laughs> pain. That is it's, pain. It, so I'm telling you, as a Pistons fan over here, like, go on, go on Pistons Twitter. I want everyone to go on Pistons Twitter right now and look at the quote tweets for all the starting lineup combinations. Look at all of them. Like, read all the replies. Look, that is Pistons. Pistons fans are upset, and I feel really bad for that social media admin because they. Don't oh, you're talking that. about the official Pistons account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, like, the official Pistons, Pistons account with like, like, account. like, oh my god. Because then people will be like on the replies, like, why is Killian Hayes starting at the two? Like, why is like you see all these replies of like people just being like. This is and yeah, you can Monty Williams, but this is Troy Weaver's creation. Like it's not a it's not a basketball team. I That's think like, uh, it's like it's not it's like it's not like a coherent basketball team. You know what I'm saying? I think I, I think and may, and I I I, be, I remember me saying this. As far as I understand these conversations, the only one that signaled this has been me. But like Troy Weaver falls into this category for me as a as a Hawks fan, Hawks fan of like. I was somewhere else that built a successful roster and now I'm getting the clout boost of saying I was there. So Troy Weaver is like, oh, you know, hey, he built it. He was part of that OKC. He built OKC. He can come over and, you know what I'm saying? He could do it over here. And in, Atlanta, it. in Atlanta, that was Travis Slink because he was like, oh, yeah, we're just going to make a Warriors East. Just going to make a Warriors East over here. Trey Young is Curry. Kevin Herter. He'll be a uh, play. Uh, play. <laughs> John Collins, Dre. No, De no, DeAndre. No, no, DeAndre Hunter is gonna be the Dre. Like, okay, brother. But no, yeah, I, I I'm glad you signaled that. I, I do want to ask, and, and we're all over the place here, but I do want to ask, uh, if you had to divide the pie between who has responsibility for like the Pistons being inept, who would you say? How would you divide that pie? All right, zero percent players. That's mm, crazy. Uh, Kick them off the bike. A zero percent player. They these players. These players. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm very serious. Zero. Where it's like, because I'm not. I can't be mad at this. Uh -uh. Is like the situation that they're in. Like these. This, the this team. This team doesn't like. It doesn't like. It's Monty Williams starting these two big lineups. And it's not functional. Like these players. Like they. I think there's been like a miss understanding from the front office of about what each player can do on the team and then it shows up and he put five out you, you have you ever played 2k rec and then you like realize that midway through the game nobody can shoot threes like you realize that that i feel like this is what's happening where like a player will be like hey I, here's a player like being scouted i think Damn, Troy we was like hey this is what i could do and then troy we was like okay we're just gonna add you to this team and it's like wait what about how does he how does he work well with the others we'll figure that out later we never figure that out so i feel like it's like zero per, like it might be like five or ten percent players where it's like in terms of the fact that 
all it took for the peep for a team to beat the Pistons during this losing streak was like three minutes of like getting serious and playing like serious basketball. Cause it felt like certain teams were like, Oh, the Pistons. Okay. We can like kind of like just lollygag through this like run and then we'll go on like a 10, 12 run. And then the team, just the body language just rolls over. I think it is 30% Monty Williams because while he has been handed this not coherent roster, like, that's where I'm saying where well, he's been handed not coherent roster. I think it's 30 percent Monty Williams, but he has made some questionable roster, like who plays for how long or what and whatnot. Like starting Killian Hayes next to Cade Cunningham was just really painful. Like the lack of space where it it took a while for like Cade was getting like the most difficult shot diet, like in the league where it was like mm-hmm. there's nothing really Cade, Cade can't operate under these conditions, right? So that's where and the rest of it goes to the front office. Because it's year four. So it's year seven, four. So like 60%. 70, yeah. 60% front office. It's year four. So six, go ahead. Don't, I, I just, I, I listen, don't get me wrong. Again, I've been putting on for the Pistons. I, I have been out here in these streets screaming for the heavens about this team. I can't get behind 0% player blame. Alec Burks is a player. I'm sorry, sorry. sorry. I if said I, I'm at ten. I said ten. I'll do ten. Okay, okay. I'll do ten. I'll There's no <laughs> way. I'm like, I'm like, cause I'm like, I'm like, hey, I'm. My, I think with Pistons fans, I'm like, I'm not really that mad at the team. Like, I'm looking at Cade. I'm mm-hmm. like, you're doing, you're trying your best. I'm looking at Jaden. You're Jayden. not getting consistent minutes. You're right. I'm like, you, the minutes flopping. I'm like, you can't control that. Isaiah, like Asar Thompson, you'll get eight minutes one game and then twenty five the next. You can't control that. Right. Like, it's like that kind of thing where I'm like, I can't be mad because I'm like, if a star, if a star and Marcus Sasser aren't going to play that much, I'd rather have them in the G League because right now it's more about reps. And like right now, then like we're not trying to win. I want a star to be able to like have reps, whether it's in the G League or NBA at this point, I don't care. So there's a lot of stuff that's outside of these players control. And they're not like I, they're not. I don't think these players are really put in a position to succeed because of just how they operate as basketball players that's why i'm not like i'm not like being like the player i i don't think like alec burks and isaiah livers that those two it, it frustrates me seeing alec burks get like played this much mm-hmm. because i feel like it shouldn't have to be the case however it's another cycle where it's like monty williams looks at his bench and goes okay i don't know who i don't know who else what, what's going to work over here i don't know who else can possibly step in he feels like he doesn't have a choice like so that's why I'm like 10%. Yeah, no, 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 I get it. Kate, like, Kate, yeah. Kate's just terrible turnovers, dribbling mm-hmm. into people, into crowded areas. Although the area is crowded, but dribbling into crowded areas, that's not a problem. Him can't not being able to throw a lob pass for real, for real, that's not a problem. Killian Hayes being Killian Hayes is not a problem. I mean, he's also just beginning playing time. Jaden Ivey looking like Russell Westbrook. Oh, well, no, probably not Russell Westbrook. I shouldn't say that. I should probably say more like Cam Reddish offensively, from my remembering of what Cam Reddish is. <laughs> um, that's that's not you know bigger than ten percent. Alec Burke being Alec Burks, that's not more than ten percent. Um, and then the combination of Wiseman and 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 uh, what's Bagley. So yeah. Omar, what what's your what is your pie looking like? Just for a clarification. Oh, I would, I would. Let's, let's all do the pie at this one. Fuck. Yeah. I would honestly. I mean, I, I agree with the ownership, the the management group, all that stuff like that. I believe, I, I believe wholeheartedly in what I said about Troy Weaver and them, because I guess it's like, I don't know if 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 somebody were to say like, yeah, I was there when Walmart was created. I was a part of that initial group. Now, mind you, that guy just took the trash out. He shouldn't get <laughs> clout. <laughs> he shouldn't get clout for taking the trash out. Like that's crazy. And I'm not. I don't, I don't know Troy Weaver's involvement. Uh, but it's the same thing I say about Travis Schlenk. Yo, I don't know who's giving him credit for finding Draymond, but stop giving him credit for finding Draymond. The nigga was there when like Steph Curry and them got picked, but he was just there. So I give management that same slice. I would flip uh, the players, but just. <laughs> obviously because of inability like some of them just have they're not able i'm not mad i'm mad at killian hayes because he's trash but i understand killian hayes should be in the tanzania league like he should he should not be playing american basketball he is a he is a creator league ote legend 
Like I can see that he's light skin. <laughs> Stop saying no, he's, <laughs> he's light skin. Sponsored by Factor and everything. Right? Yeah, he's a good hair tattoos. It works. Good he's looking a, too, man. A, you know what's crazy? He's a pretty guy, and I never hear him get like lumped in with the Kelly Oubre's, you know, of the world or whatever. So that's how I know that this like he just crazy. sucks at basketball. <laughs> I've never. Oh my heard god! Dumb over. I've heard that before. <laughs> oh yeah, I have. Well, I've done it. I, no, no. Oh god, I've done that. I'll put them in those conversations. It's not the sexiest thing you've ever played. You got uh, all, all right, all right. right. My bad. Like, the freak of me is crazy. <laughs> and then, and then the last thing is. I don't the, know both the, the last one, I will put the tempers in at Monty because, like Kofi just said, when I look down at the bench, <laughs> and it's like, oh damn, Alec Burke took like four bad shots. Now, if I put Killian Hayes in. Oh, uh, if I put Ivy in, he might just play derpy basketball and and derp us into some shots. And That's then if I put Alec Livers in, stay in Alec, stay in, stay in, buddy. I guess I just, <laughs> let me let me see what we can do there. Same thing with the bigs. Like if I take I right, B Stu, you fucking up. Let me look down here and see who I got. James Wiseman cheesing. Nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> That's tough. I can't do it. I was gonna say I'm I'm with I was with Kofi for a bit on terms in terms of not blaming the players and things like that because they're young and they're learning. It, it's still a learning process. You're learning how to play, you're learning, you're learning the game, you're learning how to win. So even if it is Jay uh Jaden Ivy out here derping his way in the shots, he's learning not to derp anymore. Like he gotta be put in those situations to learn, okay. Maybe if I had to tween into a double team, that's not gonna work. He has to go through the fire to realize how not to get burnt. I can feel that. I brought up Alec Burks. I brought up the guys that work well. I brought up Alec Burks for the most part because he's not a young guy. Alec Burks has been around the league. He's been in different situations. He's been in different locker rooms. He should know better than to derp his way into shots. Now, I can say after listening to these NBA player-led podcasts and hearing mostly a guy like Evan Turner, who I looked at Evan Turner, damn near how I look at Alec Burks. Like, all right, he's just a guy in the league. Hearing Alec Turner talk about situations he went to where, all right, y'all niggas know I can't shoot threes, and you want me to say eight? Oh, what? Okay, um, I, I, this ain't my game. <laughs> like, so it, I hold off. Like, there are players that know, like, all right, my, I know my game ain't shooting threes. Y'all got me like P.J. Tucker. I, I, I got to take five where I'm coming out. So to know that – so I, I do want to hold off a little belief that maybe Alec is being told, hey, man, listen, the young guys need some type of leader. And he feels the only way he can be a leader is to be the Alec Burks. And that's just fucking up. He never had to be V out with before. So now he's playing. I can see in 10 years, he gives on a podcast like, yeah, man, I was in Detroit. I'm not going to lie. Nigga, Monty came to me and said, I need 20 freeware every night. I don't know that. Yo, this is gross. I can see a world where I, I was watching it. We watched Alec Burke play on playback. We are sitting there and all like, yo, Alec ain't never played like this before. Like, <laughs> Who does he think he is? Nah, that's, that's really what it was. I was like, how the audacity of Alec Burks. That's, that, that's why I'm like, he said, nah, nah. Hook, hook. in the corner trap. Nah. That's like, yeah, that's why I like that. Player. That's why I like that because I feel like a lot of these players are asking, being asked to do something like stuff outside of their job description. Like it's like that. That's where I'm like, I can't. This is not you, but like it should be on the front office to recognize that and not be like. Because people were talking about, like, Bogdanovich coming back during this losing streak. And, like, people were like, oh, yeah, I can't, we can't wait till Bogdanovich. I'm like, they were talking, people were talking about Bogdanovich like he was, like, a former all-star. Like, he, he, he's going to save us, right? He's going to save this team, right? And then Bogdanovich comes back. We still went, like, 0-12 after that. You know, so it's like some of a lot of these players, like, Bogdanovich, I feel like, on a contender – that's a nice like fourth, fifth option, sixth option. Like that's what he's a number two option in Detroit, I think, right now. Like you see what like it's like yeah. a lot of people playing above. It's the it's the Jeremy Grant thing where it was like, hey, Jeremy, on a contending like playoff team, you are the third, fourth option. However, in Detroit, Jeremy Grant was taking like all the shots, bro. He was like, I'm gonna get these buckets. I don't really care about the we don't really like, yeah. So yeah. I feel like it's that. That's why I'm like, I can't be like this is y'all fault. Y'all are y'all are just y'all just put in positions that y'all y'all know y'all players like limits, but they don't. You know, it's weird. Yeah. Well, uh, Souls, I don't know if you have your pie ready to go. 
Um, oh, I'm gonna just get mine off real quick. Yeah, it's ahead, essentially Omar's oh. fight, but just a little bit more blame on Monty from like ten to fifteen. That's it. But same yeah. same reasons though. Same reasons. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. There's no need for me to beat a dead horse here because I'm pretty much we're all in the same. We're, we all see the same vision. We're just coming to different conclusions. At the end of the day, they're young players. Nobody's asking for the Pistons to blow it up. Uh, I do think personally, Jay Ivy and Kate is just and the sir just won't ever be realistic, especially if you factor Jalen Duran into that future as well. So I think he's a he's um he has upside. He's definitely belongs in the league, just maybe not in Detroit. Um, I think we can all agree, hey, even if you do blame Monty, damn it, the roster construction was awful. Oh, <laughs> these these are a bunch of players, even if you all think they're talented, they don't belong in the same locker room, god damn it. Uh you have four people trying to go to the paint, and we have people talking about maybe a sur screens being the answer or Kate Lobs being the answer. It, it, nobody has solutions because the roster doesn't make any sense. I w- if the Pistons are one of the most active teams at the deadline, it would be a complete troll. But that's I don't think you should trade anything. I have to keep going. Why really? What you, you're the same guy that says you don't see the point of having all these 20 something year olds just being stuck here. If there's stagnation, at the very least, if there's stagnation at positions, you got to move the guys you don't need. But there's I no reason to have Bagley and, and Jaden Ivey if it's stagnant those spots. I don't I don't think right now, based off of what we just, you know, we just put up a 27, 28 game losing strength. What the fuck you think you're going to get for them? Be honest. Something? Okay. <laughs> I, I, they have more. They have more. Like it's not even about. It, it's not even. No, no, no. But it's not. But it, you look at it long term. It's not even about getting something that's valuable compensation for who those guys were drafted at. Fuck that. Getting them off the roster and open up spots for future moves down the line, or to open us up to do something different. It. it what's the point of keeping them? They walk away, and then you get nothing for no, them. No, but even even, even then, I think what you're saying is short sighted. Because well, and this is just my opinion. I agree with what Kofi said, and we we've been talking to Pistons a lot, but I agree mm-hmm. with what Kofi said. Um, a Troy Weaver shouldn't be making more decisions, okay? Because he, he just shouldn't. He just shouldn't. So I I honestly don't want Troy Weaver to be the one to pull the plug. I fire him. Let somebody else pull the plug. At least I'll be delusional behind that motherfucker. But I've already seen what Troy Weaver can do with a team. I just don't think that he is the answer. I agree. Getting some of these dudes off the team, fine. But, like, in my belief, get you should trade Jaden Ivey. What do I think he'll bring in for Jaden Ivey? Nothing. How many years has Troy Weaver been um, on the team? I think it's – I think it's been, like, four like four or five, Damn. I want to say. Damn. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I'm saying. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't like, just yeah. get here. Yeah. Like, right? He's been here. Like, yeah, nah. yeah, especially, not shit. especially when I'm thinking of the years you're talking at peak the bubble and then everything. Yeah. Yeah, get rid- let him go. Let him go. Can but I, you- I got two more questions because I, I know we've been talking about the Pistons a lot, so I just got two questions. Um, Kofi, as a Pistons fan, I heard you bring up the draft picks that you were okay with and ones you were skeptical about. First question, who do you think y'all should have got if anyone else? At that five pick instead of a sword, who would you have rather wanted if not a sword? I don't mind the Asor pick. I don't mind that. Okay. Because after five, I just don't. I don't mind that because you see how special that man is on defense. Mm-hmm. And I think the the thing about the Detroit Pistons, like historically over these last fifteen years, is that there have been a lot of players that come here, it doesn't work out, and they have they go to an actual like better organization. And they figure out their role there. They fi- and mm-hmm. it fits, right? So, like examples are KCP and Bruce Brown, right? For the Nuggets, mm-hmm. perfect role for them. However, when you were on the Pistons for that roster, it, it was not it's not working like out. So I can't like blame the Asar pick. I see the talent, I see the potential. Like, however, like this team is not the team that you're gonna like be able to maximize what you can provide, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, yeah we don't have any spacers asar doesn't like make it better and now it's like it feels redundant where it, it's just a painful kind of thing so i don't really mind the pick it's just mm-hmm. that like everybody else i'm like it's not a good situation for you right now okay and my my last question all right the season ends troy reaver is fired your phone rings the detroit pistons want you to run the team let me hear. Let me hear what your plan is for this offseason for this exact business. What will you do, Kobe? You're the GM. You're the president of basketball operations. Troy, you get the fuck out of there. This is all you. What are you doing? Oh my god. Uh, the people. 
I would have to, I'd want to trade Burks and Livers, obviously, or like whatever, get them out of there first. That's my first line of, uh, and then I, I would trade Bogey. I would have to, I like, that's the only, because seeing those reports where like, I don't know if, the, I don't know if these are true or not, but I was like seeing these reports being like, the Pistons are, don't want to trade Bogey for like future first round picks. <laughs> what the fuck? And I'm like, I saw that and I was like, nah, that has to be a uh, NBA can tell. That can't be, uh, that can't be the real, uh, account. Right. You know, it's stuff like that. But I think you just have to do the draft thing. I feel like analyze it, try, trying to over, like overpaying for a free agent where it's like currently like I, I like what the Rockets did getting Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks. I actually like I look I'm looking back at it. I'm like, actually, it's not the bad because like you're not built like you're not going to compete now, but you need players to bridge that gap. You can't just have these players like not. They're they're this young, they're this inexperienced. Like you can't just like throw all young inexperienced players. You have to have some kinds mm-hmm. of like vets on here. So I'd rather I'd opt for more vets. And if that if that entail means getting rid of like a core four, whether it's uh Ivy Asar, Cade, or Duran, like I get it. Yeah, fuck Ivy. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I. Uh, it's. It's. It, I think it's Ivy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't get yeah. rid of Cade. I wouldn't yeah, I'm about to say. No, Cade. no. I'm saying. I'm saying. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not. Yeah. I. W- I think Ivy is the odd man out there out yeah. of those three. So I feel like that would probably be something I would look at. Also, I would. I would get Killian Hayes off my team. I feel like, and it's not. And it's not. It's not. Less is more. And it's not anything. Shit. And it's not anything. I think the thing about Killian Hayes is that. It's been four years, and I do see, which is weird. I know that the Killian Hayes gets a lot of like hate, and like it's it's like a meme at this point. But there's a part of me that's like Killian Hayes as a backup point guard in like the perfect situation, because he there are things that he can do on the offense. Like he's a fine passer and whatnot. And if you get him in that, where it's like, hey, this is Killian Hayes, set up your teammates, don't shoot a mid range jump shot. Like I, I would love, like I'm, but that's not this is not the team for that. So if yeah. that's like that, like it's either, it's done. It's four years. Like I can't. I don't, done, know buddy. Do. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what. I don't know what else I can say. I think those are my like main, like well, motivations or something. Put them on the Suns or something. Yeah. Well. Well. Comment below. Chat below. Your your favorite Killian Hayes trade packages. Before we get to um. Some some other constants in the NBA because outside of you guys losing, one thing's for certain: when a big gets good, Shaq gonna talk about him. We haven't really talked about you enough, Kofi. Uh, if you had to briefly describe yourself, your journey here, talk talk about yourself, man. Where are you from? How how you how you came onto the content scene for real? All right, yeah, I uh, I hail from Raleigh, North Carolina. I was born there, uh, and then I went to the University of Maryland for uh, sports broadcast journalism, mm-hmm. and I like from then. I I interned at USA Today my freshman year of college, then DC United my sophomore year, and then ESPN The Undefeated was just getting launched, and I was an intern for that, and it turned into like, it's like Anscape now, so I interned there, and then for, I was there for like five, six months. Wait, I'm then, sorry, I lagged. You, you interned at ESPN? Yeah. Motherfucker, I tried to get the. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I, had to, I had to settle for ABC, man. Shout out ABC. Man. I had to, was it was it the D, was it the DC office? No, no, no. I think I think I was like literally just interning uh, with people that were getting like B roll footage of like mm. uh, lacrosse, all the other shit. Maybe there was a specific term. I probably missed out on it. I was I was a dumb high schooler. No, nah, uh, it was yours. It was yours, Kofi. <laughs> yeah, you, you I, basically, probably the exact same thing as you, motherfucker. I'm sick. Continue. Um, and then I got a call from SB Nation wanting to be on their social media team. This was about this is like six years ago. Mm-hmm. So I've been at SB Nation, Seeker Base, Vox Media ever since. Um, I did social media for two years, uh, ran the Twitter account, the uh, Instagram and all of that. And then SB Nation's YouTube channel, I got added to their YouTube channel to like work on uh, a show with my boss, uh, John Boys. And from then, we rebranded into Secret Base as a YouTube channel. We're still under the Vox Media umbrella, but we were like, okay, SB Nation makes like articles. We our like content doesn't really it's not the same kind of thing. Yeah. So we decided to rebrand a secret base. And 
all of that time for four years, I've been like doing my own thing sometimes where it's like I'll make a YouTube video. Like I used to just make a YouTube video where um, I'll be like, hey, I'll make a two hour documentary on the history of like high school mixtapes. I'll do that. Whether that was like stuff in my free time wanting to prove to my employer that I could make videos because I was doing social media for two years and I was like, wait, the only videos that I've been making are from like my college broadcast reel. So I got to start doing the YouTube stuff. So I started doing that and then got added to the YouTube team. And then I'm just been there and going back and forth between like doing my content and then working on a fumble dimension with like sports video game content. And that's where I am today. So, yeah. I do want to ask you this because you are the second guest in a row we've had that actually came from like a like they, they went to school for sports media. Right. Um, yeah. So what are the things that you learned through like being like formally educated in sports media as opposed to like for for my background hey i just started making youtube videos in high school and it took off and you know the numbers made sense for me to go full time so what are, what are the things that you feel like you learned during that time that like set you apart essentially i still i still take even though i don't see like i'm more of a content creator than a journalist right now mm -hmm. i there are certain things that stick with me as a content creator where it's like taking that media ethics and media law class freshman year was very important, right? Finding out like getting like sources and then learning after effects and learning how to sequence your videos if you need to or learning how to interview or and, like interview practices and stuff like that. Like all of that is still like very important because on like social media, sometimes people like will do stuff and I'm like, well, that's not how it's like supposed to be done. And like, Sometimes like people like go over the ethics and like the whatever of it. I'm like, hey, that's not how like that's not how it's supposed to happen, right? I yeah. think that the sports like broadcast journalism also. I feel like I went to school at a time where journalism and like content creation, sports media was like getting like closer and closer, and then the line is basically blurred now um, in terms of all of that. So I think that that's like where i like keep everything where it's like i still know how to like cut edit videos i still have that kind of like journalism mentality of like telling a story or like writing a script or like doing like time codes or whatnot mm -hmm. um but it's also a lot of learning on the fly content creation wise because when i went to college i remember the like one of the journalism like no-nos at the time was don't film vertically Right. It was like rule of thirds. Don't film. Don't film right, vertical right. videos. That was a whole that was a whole big thing where it's like, why are you filming vertically? And now as soon as I got out of college, everything's being filmed vertically. Mm. So I'm like, OK, so that taught me where it's like, even though I went I went to like school for this, not everything that I was taught stays the same. And you got to learn to adapt. That's like also the kind of thing that like just I like stuck with me, honestly. You know, it's crazy. I think that rule is still true, though. Yeah, in vertical. the most technical sense of the the way, apparently, if you got a camera, you're not supposed to film vertically because it warps it towards right. the top and the oh, bottom. Yeah. Yeah. But if you got a your phone is a different conversation, and then you can't repurpose the content if it's filmed vertically as right. well. But this is super nerd talk at that point. Uh, <laughs> I do I do want to ask because um, I I I saw you first off of TikTok. Um. And then I saw it like in the comments, it was like, oh, this is a black Motown Noah uh, type beat going on. He's talking about the Pistons as well, which was crazy. It was a crazy comparison, but I was like, oh, okay, cool. I fuck with it. But what do you, how do you, how do you feel like TikTok helped you um, in your success uh, going in, 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 you know, your journey here? I think it's a big because it allows me to just like try new stuff that like with like low like stakes. Where I feel like I, I know the feeling of like making a YouTube video where it's like 20 minutes and like you're like, this is heavily edited and you're like, this is going to be a banger. This is the one that's going to break the algorithm, this is whatever. And you spend all that time, you put it out and it doesn't do as well as you think. That, that, that mentally sometimes I feel like that can be like just emotionally like draining because you're yeah. like putting all of this work. Whether like TikTok, I can just be on the couch with a green screen, have like talk for a minute, edit it. If it, if it bangs, it bangs. If not, I just move on. I think that that's like the great part about that I like about vertical, like short form content where it's like you can talk about an idea. You can get a lot of information in a, at the same time, but it doesn't feel like you're I'm putting like so much work into this video. It allows me to like go at my own pace. And I like like the style of my video where it's like chill. It's like there's, there's edits in the background, but 
it's not like I'm not doing like graphics. I'm not like in the lab doing like Adobe After Effects and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I like about it. That adjustment for me has been weird. Like, oh, like after three minutes spent a minute recording, two minutes editing. Like, oh, I'm I'm done. Like, this is the yeah. I can just publish it. This is uh okay. And then it gets like ten thousand views. Oh, so it took me that long, and I got a okay. This is this is weird, but I'm I'm starting to get used to it though. I think that TikTok is the best, like, of, like, exposure-wise, but, like, it's only, I've never seen myself as a TikToker, right? Like, mm-hmm. I do, I am a Twitch partner, like, I do have, like, 19,000 YouTube subscribers, where it's, mm-hmm. like, so I feel like I, I've i learned about just, like, being everywhere, like, being on every platform just mm-hmm. in case something happens, and I learned that from Vine, right? Because yeah. in high school... I thought Vine was the stupidest thing ever when it like first came out. I was like, six second videos, this is the dumbest thing ever. And then like a year later, you're like, man, I wish I caught on the wave. I wish I, I wish yeah. I even had like a presence there. I wish I was one of like the first people because like yeah. that changed a lot of people's lives. But then when Vine died, like there were a lot of people, like a lot of content creators that were just on Vine and had to like start from scratch rebuilding their platforms on somewhere else. And I was like, and I learned like from that lesson, I was like, I'm never, that's never going to happen to me. And I a lot of them, a lot of them didn't, yeah. a lot of them yeah, died right there. Yeah. A lot of them didn't. And I'll go a step further. A lot of them didn't network because Vine was like a little too early TikTok. So when you had mm-hmm. a platform, you could just be in the crib or outside doing skits, not really talking to nobody. The platform goes like this. Now you ain't got no connections. And now you basically back up to ground zero, hoping someone remembers your name from Vine. Um, and the ones that did network and connect are the ones that end up being the King Batches, the Jake and Logan Pauls, the ones that made a, a seamless transition into other shit after yep. Von died. Because mm-hmm. you can look back at the ones that did blow up. Because I was, I don't know why, but not long ago, I was on a kick of like, oh man, I, I want to just what happens to a lot of these old Vine guys. The one I was looking at was, um, I don't know if niggas remember Jerry Perp Drink. It was the dark skin nigga yep. used to do. Mm. I was like, yo, what happened to Jerry? They went to that Facebook. Nigga, yeah, just be around. Yeah. Oh, okay, this is what Jerry does, but Jerry wasn't one. He was kind of connected with people, but he didn't really put himself out there enough, at least in my opinion, and like connect with a lot of people. I thought he could be at least where King Batch was, but King Batch put in a lot more footwork. I feel. Yeah, and people are gonna dunk on King Batch now, and to a degree, you don't have to think it's funny. Fair enough, but it's shit. He made he did the right thing. <laughs> I tell you that he, he made the right plays. Now, if you don't like the content, you don't like the content, but he made the right yeah. plays. Because the sure. other ones is bagging my groceries. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Yeah. The ones that I'll, didn't make the connections? Not at I, all. I, I want I want to ask you two as I believe at this point, uh, I wouldn't say that, but one of the one of the more successful like short form creators um that makes uh content for short form specifically. I'm writing these down. I'm trying to do you <laughs> do you feel like there's um just just from what you know about like your content, is there like an avenue for you to do short form content full time? Or do you think that's not possible whatsoever? I think the thing here is that I love my job. Like I love working at Secret Base. Secret mm-hmm. Base allows me to make these sports video game Twilight Zone style videos and I get a lot of creative control where it's like I get to, like my idea, I run it by my boss and my boss is like yo, this is cool. Let's do it. And eventually I'm like making a video about like hitting 3000 batters in like a a simulation for a season. Like I'm doing that cool kind of video and secret base has the platform where it's like, it's a million. It's like one point. One point three six subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. So one point three six million subscribers. I didn't just look at it. (laughs) (laughs) I I would be, I would be like, there's always some like I've gotten like job offers other places being like, hey, do you want to work blank, blank, blank? I'm like, there. It's really hard to, it's really hard to be like, hey, this creative control, the the outreach, and like people like my videos on that channel. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just willing to just like be I'm willing to work and like do it the go to the job I love, but also on the side I'm able to like build my community like outside of work. Like my mm-hmm. my YouTube channel is not property of the company. Like all of these outlets. I still want to have that kind of safety net if stuff does go south because it's the media industry. You know, yeah. I've been I've seen layoffs at basically every, all, all of my journalism friends like they they have worked at a place that has had like brutal layoffs. Right. Like you wake up one day, you can't get in the slack. Like it's it's very like heartbreaking. of like you you like I can't 
like I put all I put my all into this company. Like I've been, but it's a reminder that these like anything can happen. So I yeah. like having that kind of like content creation like stability, but being no, but knowing that like if I wanted to make the push. I think I'm still making that push content wise now where I'm like getting more into like making these YouTube videos. Like I'm just like pushing a little bit harder, like each and every, like every so often. And it's like paying dividends right now, mm. honestly, which, but, so I don't know if I want to go ever go solo as a short form content creator because I also like make these like deep dives, these video essays as well. So I would rather, I think I would just want to be like all around. Answer, answer the real question. I don't even know I'd be so that that like that. Is there money in solo content creation from the short form aspect? How much money yep. are you making on TikTok? Let's talk about it right now. Sure. Oh Let's uh, talk about it. On sure. TikTok from the creator, from the creativity beta. Okay, I'll pull it up. Actually. Oh, you about to answer. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, one thing about me, I don't gatekeep, all right? Yeah, so let's talk. Oh, 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 oh. That's, in them. that's what it is. That's, no, that's, that's, that's the UMD in them. That's what it is. <laughs> Come on, you're from that's Salisbury. David Ronaldo, by the way. So, okay, Salisbury is still in North Carolina, Omar. So, over the course of six months on TikTok, I've made thirteen thousand dollars. Mm. Six right? months. So okay. that's like, so that's like a thing where the creativity beta it pays you, but it's not like. It's not like enough. I think the thing goes out for like brand deals. When you, work, in the chat. when you when you work with like a when you work with like a direct TV, when you work with like these brands that like have the money and stuff like that, that's when it like it pays dividends where it's like, hey, we'll do this one video for like 10K or hey, we'll do this one, like we'll do four tweets for 5K. It's like there is money in social media like content creation. It just it's just a matter of like it comes and goes it's like never really consistent you might have like a big month and then you might have a month of like no activity um but i feel like when you put those together like it's yeah. like you i feel like i am not at the position where i could be a fool like i could just make money off of the creativity beta and be fine i live in los angeles rent is high like you know what i'm saying like <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's like it's like that and also i just don't want to i just don't want to be like dependent I don't want my whole, I don't want my, like, if I went and did the creativity beta, like, and that was my main source of income, the anxiety I would get from that. Cause it would be like one day, cause one day TikTok would be like, oh, actually your RPM is like 13 cents now. Yeah. yeah. All right. Like that, that's the kind of thing where I'm like, it, it's, uh, it's nice to have, it's nice to have like extra, it's nice to have like that extra thing. But like that on top of my salary allows me to like live comfortably in LA, which is great. Yeah, I, I think what you're speaking to, and uh, this is my situation as well, is just trying to be well-rounded as possible because of how volatile the industry is. Just try to set that base. Try to try to be um, try to try to have multiple platforms if you can. Um, but you know, in terms of like social media presence, be present on different platforms so that like when you're having a bad month over here, oh, you can make that up over here because this this platform is better suited to perform in January than it is for this platform who's better suited to perform in June when the NBA Finals are on. Uh, side note, shout, shout out to Lowe, by the way. Um, Dude, Lowe makes some fire TikToks, dog. He make a lot yeah. of money. Yeah. Nah, Bro, I ain't gonna lie. No. That, that question that right tech, there, I want to ask him that too. That, that tech listen. TikTok? That tech TikTok area? Yeah. Bro, you get the that nice equipment. Mm -hmm. That tech TikTok, bro. Everything looks clean and crisp. You get like the, the people will be sending you that like that that the really nice stuff. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be watching. I'll be like, yo, um, uh, insert brand here to send me this i'm like yo must be nice yo this is crazy but he just but he just said it he said it in the chat himself he was like from ad revenue it's just not it's not gonna get it done uh but from sponsorships and stuff like that you can't add that i want to yeah. i want to be clear i'll oh, black boy down there too i want to be clear to to folks he kofi just said 13k over the course of six months yep that's what is that 26k a year but if you do if you do yeah, it's two. It's twenty one hundred dollars a month pre tax. Yeah, and it depends. And it all depends on like how much your videos bang. So like for this for this month, it was like I made two thousand like two thousand five hundred right two thousand five hundred a month, which like is like that feels like an extra paycheck yeah. to me. It's yeah, not yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. not like my whole thing. So I'm like, oh, this is cool because, it, and it's way better than like being on a platform that just doesn't pay you anything. Like, you know, when like they when they took out reels bonuses, I was like, it's Cooked. not going to like be completely like 
debilitating for me, but it was cool to have that extra kind of thing, you know. So um, I'll dumb it down for everybody in case um, there's somebody watching doesn't understand a word of what we're talking about. Um, you get to blow, you get to blow up on TikTok even further beyond because I won't say that you haven't already. My God, I'm trying to copy. <laughs> um, you you blow up on YouTube. I see you uploading every day. You blow up on YouTube. You blow up on the Twitch. Which platform would you like to be at in its peak by the end of 2024? Oh my God, I Twitch is. I feel like Twitch is the hardest platform to grow. Like start, yeah. start, start from scratch. <laughs> Starting from scratch. Yeah. You, from like scratch. a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people come like ask me or like, "Hey, I'm getting started on this content creation. I just started Twitch. I'm like, is that it's the is that hardest first one. platform? <laughs> yeah. it's it's I'm like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping real with you. Like, you gotta, you gotta siphon people to Twitch. But when, like, but when you're there, like, Twitch is exponential growth. It really fascinates me because it's like, you see how like your twitch website is like organized usually by most watched to least watched and then you get to a point where it kind of like the snowball effect like Mm -hmm. getting to that snowball effect is tough and i would love to be like able to you know i am a twitch partner but i would love to be able to just like stream on twitch more have that like do numbers or whatever that and then youtube as well because i feel like tiktok is the best way to like get people to follow you but like twitch and like youtube is the best place to like truly build communities like people that like mm. really ride for your content in terms of like people that just like see your content as like oh okay if i don't if i'm not feeling it, i'm just gonna scroll to like the infinite void of short form content creation i do yeah. i do see low down there low you are invited literally anytime because there's a lot of these questions that i want to ask to you as well just to get that perspective because bso's knows i i am like the thing about TikTok is that if you want to make it a living, we're talking about making it a living yeah. as opposed to as a side thing at the, in this specific like point. Yeah. yeah. I, I The idea of living like from brand deal to brand deal, sponsorship to sponsorship is scary to me. So I would want anybody to break that down. But I do want to ask you this, Kofi, about um, something that you said about, you know, the journalism uh, uh, abilities and stuff that you got from school and how it carries over to um your your content creation path would you advise anybody that's going to school for journalism to start on their own side project as just a backup because you talked about how you know the the volatility of the media world if if they don't like you one week two weeks three weeks or one month two month three month the whole channel could tank the whole platform could tank and then you can't log into slack so do you think a lot of those kids should start their own platform thousand percent a thousand percent and i think that college is the best place to do it Cause college, mm, say it again. Co- say it college, again. College is the best. Like college is the best place. Depending on, depending on how you spend your time, college is the best place to like truly hone your skills and like. Cause whatever, I feel like y'all y'all understand. Whenever y'all start making content for the first time, it's gonna be bad. Yeah, it's gonna be or bad. It's but it, first like, your first video, I, I you look at your first video now and you're like, oh man, this is who, who made this? Was this this iMovie? Like what like who was I was like what was I doing? Like, you know, like shit like that. It was so, iMovie. What do you was mean? IMovie. It was iMovie. It was iMovie with all the with all the transitions built in. Yeah, oh, yeah. She, he thought she was cooking with the thought the, you did something when you paid the 599. You was like, Oh yeah, I got this exclusive. Not too much, shit. not too much. Yeah, but <laughs> I feel like now it's cool to see that TikTok is the great like it feels like it levels the playing field in terms of like building creators in the sports world where they're like, cause like me growing up, my goal was to be like a baseball play by play announcer. Right. Mm-hmm. And like me growing up, but me growing up, YouTube like didn't like, wasn't what it is. Like the content creation thing is this is still like relatively brand new. If we look at the grand scheme of like every industry and like career paths, like the industry is still brand new, like YouTube, is only like what 18 it's like some 7 15 18 years old like youtube yeah, still yeah, like the potential like for like being a creator there's this one creator right now he's the radio voice for the los angeles clippers and i think that he did a lot of he did a lot of videos on sports broadcasting in college being like here here i am covering i forget what college he went to i think it might be usc but it was like here here i am as a college like play by play creator um being able to like call these games or whatnot and like here's the behind the scenes of how it really is and it's really interesting content and then 
he gets that Clippers role and he's still able to do the social media stuff on the side. So this stuff, like no matter if that's your full time job or like if, the, if your goal is to like have a job but still do content creation on the side or full time, it's best to start as early as possible because this stuff doesn't happen overnight. Like it takes it takes like years to just be like like really and if it does happen overnight, that's like the few and far between one like one of one of them ones, you know. Yeah, you're right. No, it's like you, oh I thought you were No, you're good, you're good. That was no, it. No, no, I was about to say you spitting, bro. I could I couldn't agree more as a person that uh granted I didn't get ESPN, but uh I got I got my own <laughs> uh, little internship. And yeah. let me tell you something now, Kofi, correct me if I'm wrong, but the main reason why I did YouTube outside of hating my job. Is I'm looking at what's going on in the studio. I'm like, damn, that YouTube shit ain't shit. <laughs> like, man, it is like it's nothing. The idea of being a long witted person that like me, for example, does not work on national television. When I seen them producers in the back, all right, hey, hey you got 45 seconds to fader. You got 30 seconds to fader. You got 15 seconds to fader. On here, shit, we can we could troll for the next hour talking about the exact <laughs> same thing and yeah. not and get away with it. So I'm telling you, there's so many practices. And that's why I love that you brought up college because we've had the good discussion all the time on here. And maybe that's what we'll have uh, later on in this podcast. Hell, but uh, we've had the discussion all the time as college a scam. And I've always said the price. Yes. The experience. Fuck no, because I'm not going to lie. Like being able to learn these things and then be like, OK, how can I twist this? Granted, at a simpler level, but do it on my own. You really find yourself there. And it, it's it was it was kind of beautiful seeing. And no self glazed, but seeing me take like lessons that I've learned from a much higher entity and be like, yo, what if I just <laughs> get a little Logitech, <laughs> get a get a little blue Yeti and ball up? Yeah. So it, it, it's really nice. I recommend all of my communication majors, sports management majors, all of you, man, start your own shit, even if it's not a long term goal, just so you can truly see the difference as well. And I, I know I, I know I, I know I made a, a joke about like iMovie and stuff, but the the good thing about content creation is that there are so many free resources mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. and like free or cheap resources out there where it's like, yeah, the you might be able to get like a sure mic, a USB sure mic for uh two hundred and eighty nine dollars or whatnot. You might be able to do that. However, there are other mic options that still get the job done. And I feel like at that first place i feel like the content itself like once the content you get the content like topics like you get people that like rock with what you're making i feel like then you can be like oh let me like splurge on this webcam or whatever um so i think that like davinci resolve is free i think that's the free edit software right and davinci resolve was switching over to that yeah. DaVinci resolve switched over, switched over. <laughs> switched over. I'm, I'm still i'm still adobe premiere because okay. i i um well, I work at well working at Vox. That comes with being you get at, the like, free. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh not, yeah. Real, then, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. So, and I've been using Premiere for nine years, so it's gonna be. Oh, so yeah. I'm just this point here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just so many like free resources out there. Whether it's like, hey, I need to edit software. Hey, um, certain like graphics places like Canva, I think has a free option. Mm-hmm. Whether it's like, yeah, you might have a watermark thing but like there's so many like different ways to start and it, it it also i feel like another thing is getting over the fear of what people are going to think about your content i feel like that really delayed me for a little bit i was because in college i was terrified at that uh the the red youtube dislike bar i was afraid of like <laughs> i was really afraid of like dropping a video and just seeing it all red and i'm like oh man maybe i'm not but like getting over that too also was like a, a big thing i, I think, have oh go ahead Omar. i think i think another thing and, and we can move on if we're moving on but i think yeah. i think another thing too and this is my perspective on like those that get into the worlds of media but even like the guy that you just said that's the clippers play-by-play dude mm-hmm. i think his job is like niche i want to niche might like even be like small like a small way to say what it is that is such a unique job that I would be so fearful of being laid off uh, and getting another job that's like that, that I would I would have to start doing something else because if yeah. he did get if he did get fired, and mind you, he in theory he has two basketball teams in his town, so oh thank God. But let's just say it's like the OKC announcer or whatever the case may be. If he gets fired, I think in Oklahoma there's no other professional sports team to even try to transition over to. 
So then at that point, you're looking at, hey, if I want to get back into the exact same line of work, I would for sure have to relocate or maybe do some like triple A ball or something like that, make significantly less, I would think at least, and then start from there. Um, but if you, ha- if you have your own thing, you could still cover it or do something along those lines in your own way yep. and still be able to, you know, live your life in that regards. That's what that's what got me out of play by play, like wanting to be a play by play person. I got to Maryland. And the thing about the University of Maryland that really separates from a lot of journalism schools is that there are a lot of journalism schools that for two years, you don't even touch the equipment. Right. Mm-hmm. But the University of Maryland, they they were like, hey, you can be able to call these games like freshman year. You could be able to call these like sports. Yeah. We had a lot. We had a lot. I know we got a, we got rid of a couple of teams, but there were still a lot of opportunities. When I tell you, I called a doubleheader play-by-play for baseball. You were done. Right. I'm t- I was, I was yeah. done, dude. First game, first game went well. I was like, all right, cool. We are in the third inning of the second game, and I'm like, I don't think I, I don't think that's I want to do this anymore. This nigga right? commentated on 40 yeah. hours of baseball yeah, in one day. Man, <laughs> and, then, and then, and then I took a look back. I went home, and I looked back. I see, I see Jim Nance on the TV. He's been working for 40 years. Like he's had that job for a long time. Like the the turnover, the turnover in like Mike play Gorman by been play doing it for like thirty years. Yeah, that there is like you have to wait for someone to like retire Die. or Die. pass Die. away <laughs> for even for even a chance at putting your resume into that seat. Because a lot of people grew up with dreams of being like a play by play broadcaster, being like, oh, I want to be, I want to do that. Like, I was like, I looked at it, I was like, there's, I, I'm out, man. That's, that's, too, that's too uphill a bad battle for me, man. Ain't that ain't that all the Knicks announcers right now? Kevin, they they're just talking about Kevin Harlan and them. They're just talking to Marv Albert. They're just talking about getting out of it like this year, next year. So finally somebody else could move in. And Jim like Nance Brian, finally Jim Nance just retired from I think Colin March Madness, but he still like he still covers oh, every other he was like, This is my last March Madness. And then he's still doing the Masters, right? He's still doing uh, I think football, right? In like He's Marv Albert. Sports, Marv yeah. Albert is eighty-two. Um, Jesus, and, and he's still. But that's why he be sounding like he uh chewing on his guy. own. Yes, Jeez. playoff games, finals games. Yeah. Yes. The Celtics have had the same one since the eighties. Mike Gorman and Tom Heinsohn. Tom Heinsohn just died a couple years ago, and then um Mike Gorman. This is his last year. So yeah, those those jobs are like legacy jobs. I ain't gonna lie. But it's, it's like so hard to get into those. But even for Kevin Harlan. I want Kevin Harlan to broadcast a Super Bowl so bad, right? But whenever CBS gets it, it's Jim Nance. Like, even even if you're, like, at this, they will still be, like, there might be someone that's still, like, yeah. not in your way, but, like, there's still someone here being, like, this is the guy for this. And I'm, like, I was, no like, Kate, I, I, no I Kate. I think that's why Rachel Nichols made such a big deal about it when she went through her little thing the with the ESPN. Yeah, because yeah, once you get it, like, Damn, I've got it for the next 50, 60 years, potentially, if it if it goes well. But she yeah. there, there are a lot of people in the sports media industry, as soon as they like leave like a big channel, like a big, a big TV network or big, there's only a two, like two places, three places. Like there's only a few places that you can go. And it's so competitive. Yeah. Right. I think like, that's the media industry in, in general, though. Because yeah. I even made that point within YouTube space. Like, let's say you you end up being the editor for a sideman, right? Oh shit, I got I got this crazy job. They're paying me well. It's probably six figures for the sideman. Let's say they lay you off in two years or some shit. And now you're used to that lifestyle. Six figures a year as an editor. You haven't built your own platform. Who I, I, how many YouTubers, how many, you know what I'm saying, social media presences are gonna give you that type of salary? I I I feel like I if you work at Sideman, they're probably giving you like benefits at that point too. So we're talking about like what Mr. Beast level, AMP maybe like that. that say, no cap, of... that, no cap. That was me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was legitimately me. So like, how do how do you find that replacement to that job? And within the media industry, like a lot of the jobs are hella niche. That like, yo, th- you don't have much options. And even those options, are they even hiring? And even if they are hiring, it's still gonna be hella competitive because a lot my, of people want that job. So. Yeah, my my option was to move to Los Angeles. Or I was about to move to North Carolina, to be honest with you. I was literally the uproot yourself, move yourself from Atlanta and go to Los Angeles and hope 100 Thieves was playing, paying and then, or go to uh, North Carolina. Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's wicked. Yeah, be it with Beast. 
And that that fell through too. I ain't gonna lie, that fell through too. Mr. Beast fell through too. So you yeah. gotta be living in Greenville, dog. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was gonna do it though. I ain't gonna lie. I was gonna do it. I was legitimate. We we had conversations and all that. I was gonna do it. But yeah, we, we were we were preparing for something at that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, speaking of speaking of preparation, uh man, we gotta gotta get one more hoop segment in. Um appreciate appreciate that though, Kofi. It was very inciting. Inciting conversation. I ain't gonna lie. I'm copying all the. I literally TikTok made shows. a new TikTok, nigga. I'm yeah, I'm about to say. I'm. I, co- I promise you. <laughs> no way, trolling. I'm copying all the TikTok. That was the reason why you stopped making TikToks. I ain't gonna lie, man. You was you was scary for a couple years you, uh, for like a, nah, a small you, incident. Not scary, you were petty. You were petty as hell. No, not yeah. even scary, petty, whatever you want to call it. No, but it was I crazy. Literally, though, I literally like no joke. I just made a brand new TikTok. Uh, I'm 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 gonna start over. I'm gonna say F it. I'm gonna just, oh, yeah, I'll let it again. Hello. Yeah. Might as well show it at this one. Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, uh, I can uh, see uh, Biakugan. Uh, maybe. No. Okay. Sharanga. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Put it on. Hey, only Damo ninety seven. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. 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 As people Try can to, see, because only Damo. That's Damo. It's Damo. One of those, man. Just look it up. One we Damo. You Damo. Go on, Damo. Jesus Christ. That's I got a lot of just Damo, like Damo ninety seven. Just you know what's funny? You know what's funny? I have one that this, my last one is literally just Damo. Like that's my last. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. The, the one where, the one where I got five k on TikTok that I'm like eff it. That that's just Damo. Yeah, that, that's that's yeah. it. Well, <laughs> well, let's get this last basketball segment out the way, ladies and gentlemen, because unfortunately, a lot of things don't change in the basketball sphere, and um, so I had to leave that shit eventually. Man, um, I think we all agree this is one of those moments where it's like, damn, bro, can, can this shit change? Does a man stop doing the traditions every time a great big enters the league? This man, O'Neal, hates immediately. Now, I did. Now I don't have the video, unfortunately. Like I said, I'm new here. But Shaq <laughs> takes issue with Chet being called phenomenal. And he says, and I quote, y'all just can't be giving people these things who ain't put in no work. Now. I will go ahead and try to do my best to find the video. But do y'all think that Chet Holgram is phenomenal? That's the question. And the follow-up question is, is Shaq just straight up hating, or does he have a point that we throw around these hymns, these um, peaks, these phenomenal labels around too much? How do you feel about what Shaq said about I, Let me say, as the as one of the first Chet stands, and I told people how amazing Chet would be years ago on this platform, um, Shaq is not... I know what Shaq is doing now. After him doing this with 17 basketball players, and then they drop 40, and then he goes on TNT. You know, I was just trying to add a spark. I just wanted to add that dog to you, see if you had it. That's all it is. That's all. He's just going. He's just saying this to see if Chad will respond. He knows he's a dog. He's just doing the old man thing. So I'm going to personally say I don't think Shaq is bugging. I don't think Shaq is tripping. Shaq is doing what Shaq usually does. Yes, I do absolutely 130 Five nine thousand percent do believe Chet is fucking phenomenal at the game of basketball. Phenomenal as long as he's healthy. It's really it's really special to see like a rookie just go into the situation and just be that efficient and that like good on both sides. And and people are like, yeah, Chet had another year in like the a year in the league before. He's not really a rookie, but like the injury he had, he wasn't like able to really play like or like even like work out or whatever like it was yeah. like not work out but like it wasn't able to like be on the court trying to like rehab for a little bit but i think it's interesting whenever shaq like who shaq gives props to and who shaq is like it's not enough young fella you know what i'm saying it's like it's really weird and it's one of my favorites where it's like my favorite uh thing is when a perimeter big like has a bad game and Shaq is like, "Hey man, you better be like three feet under the basket, bro." Like I'm like, Shaq, it's the game is different, dog. Like what you what you mean? All of yo, them do yo, it over yo, there. Yo, right town, yo towns, you need more post ups. I'm like, it's twenty, twenty three. Okay, never mind. You know, it's like that kind of thing. So I, I kind of dismiss it because, you know, the secret base. We did a YouTube uh, beef history on like the feud between Shaq and Dwight Howard. And it feels like it's very it's very funny to see how much it truly takes for Shaq to be like off of a player, be like, "Hey, man, nah, we're not doing this. We have we Shaq versus Javale McGee, you know, like yeah, didn't take much, you know." Oh, y'all did make the um the say the the Wilt versus Kareem beef video. 
Yeah. One of my favorite yeah. Souls and Sage videos, man. I ain't gonna lie. I learned a lot about Wilt that day, man, that I shouldn't have known. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, fucking, I fucking love those beef videos. I did find Fuck. the video right now. Oh, well, uh, uh, you know what? 60% Kira, you're right. Fair enough. That's gay. Uh, <laughs> Paul Pauls, ladies and gentlemen. Um, But I did find the video real quick. Uh, I can share this video. I don't know if this will make the final cup. Should have been in the streams. But here we go. This is Shaq on Chet Holgram being phenomenal. What would Shaq's stat line be if he was up against Chet, who is phenomenal? Don't, don't do that. He's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Where does that come from, though? Like, what? All right. I hate when y'all do that. Which part? Be no. saying he's great? No, y'all some throwing around words that we had to work hard for. Phenomenal okay, is not the right really word. He's really promising. Mm. Thank you. He's good, but don't be going promising yeah, blocks the and other great. And he can't have promising. I'm not saying that. You know what? Starting the day. Jack hold on. Against the Chet Holmgren. Starting the day, I'm putting it in all that shit. I am. Starting today. Damn. Like, and say the word great. No, y'all can't. Y'all can't just be giving these giving these people things who ain't putting no work. Like he's not your work. Unprovoked. Now, Yes. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. So like the question was is the wrong word. He right. deterred the question. I got a question. Unless he does it for a consistent, a consistent amount of time. Okay. I'm not talking two or three okay. games. I'm talking years. You got your point. N years. I got a question. I got N a question. I got a check, question. Check, check. That's not that check, check, check can't I, control I, that. He just I got, got here. I got, <laughs> I got something. 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 Can I get is it can I go? I got something for Shaq. I got something for Shaq. You triggered my trap card. Now, uh -oh. I know this isn't necessarily up to you, but you're talking about those being given things without working for them, correct? If I'm not mistaken, you pouted because Christian Leitner was on the Olympic team, the dream team, and you weren't. But why should a college kid be put on there at all anyway, Shaq? Right? Because you haven't worked for anything. You haven't done anything. You haven't proven yourself at the NBA level. And then I got another one. Hold on. You didn't see both cards. You triggered my trap card. If I'm not mistaken, you were drafted in 1992, but then four years later, you were granted top 50 all-time NBA players, the NBA top 50 all-time, after putting in just four years of work in the NBA. Now, if we're talking about what you did in those four years, maybe you have a conversation, but I don't think four years worth of work is enough to solidify you in the conversation of top 50 all time in the NBA. That just doesn't make sense. When we talk about what people have done, when we talk about if they put the work in, Shaq, you got to look in the mirror, dog. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You do. You do. You do. W lag. But he used magical hats and mirror force, bro. He <laughs> expert. <laughs> oh, <yo. laughs> nah, I, I, I ain't gonna lie, nah. I, everything I was gonna say, oh, oh my god, it. I ain't, I ain't gonna nothing to say. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a little bit of a coinky dink out of Shaquille O'Neal, uh, especially when he had a teammate uh, of like Kobe Bryant. That, uh, if anything, he was like, bro, you don't work hard enough. So the idea of you telling somebody that they can't even get labels like promising, <laughs> which is insane at that point, because of um, you know, that they, they, they don't work hard. That yeah, that's kind of Mickey at that point, bro. I don't really have anything else to say. I think um, I think for me, it's the right message, wrong messenger, and wrong player to go at. Cause it has mm -hmm. been a theme with a lot of conversations we've had lately when it comes to Jalen Brunson. When it comes to uh, the Steph Curry conversation we had a while back, um, what Kenny said on on TNT of like, yo, I mean, certain certain words, certain conversations are just meant uh, meant for certain people. Like, there's just levels to this. Like, there's no diss at another player. It's not saying that you're trash, but yeah, there, there's just levels to this. Um, but when it comes to this specific conversation. I think Chet has done enough and has proved enough to be phenomenal. Now, if if these same if, if if that conversation was about let's say uh I ain't gonna lie with all due respect a uh, sir phenomenal mm. <sighs> I wouldn't say phenomenal I, I would say like flashes of brilliance I would yeah, say yeah. I would say another word like the wording would be like a little bit different you know yeah yeah um, but yeah, that's that's my take and, on that. and maybe if that's what he was asking and I know Don wants to go but maybe if he was asking for more caveats phenomenal for a rookie okay that that could be better. But the fact that he can't get any of those, Mr. I should have been on the dream team, 
nah, that shouldn't have been the case. Mr. Top 50, four years into the league. And I see somebody in chat, he was putting up numbers. Yeah, didn't nobody say he wasn't putting up numbers. Is Chad not putting up numbers right now? Does he? Can he not get a title like that? He's putting up numbers. I'm about to say Chad is 100% putting up numbers. And Omar, you really t- hit the nail right on the head talking about the top 50 list. I didn't even know about the Dream Team thing. I wasn't going to say anything about that. But I was going to speak on how you get put on the top 50 list after four or five years of work. And on top of that, your rookie year, you were called phenomenal. They say you were phenomenal as a rookie. I'm pretty sure I can go and find you calling another rookie phenomenal. Like, I don't know what we're doing. I'm pretty sure when Ben Simmons was doing work, an LSU kid, when he was doing work, you praised him. I don't think Ben Simmons was one of the ones that got the Shaq challenge. This is the LSU kid. He, I'm pretty sure you gave him grapes. Chad, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But I'm pretty sure he gave Ben Simmons praise when Ben was balling. But that's that, that's crazy. A guy like Chet, who is one of the league leaders in blocks, while giving you an efficient 18, while shooting 40% from three. Now, when the season first started, he was shooting 60. You were like, oh, this has to drop. This has to drop. He's shooting 60. This isn't sustainable. Then it dropped down to 55. And you're like, okay, it, it, this is still unsustainable. He's not this efficient. 40% seems like who he is. I don't think it drops down to the 35s and 36. No, Chet's a great shooter. People want to put the label of, oh, he has Shea. Even when you take the minutes of no Shea, no J-Dub, no whoever you want to say he has, he's still efficient. The efficiency doesn't fall off a cliff. He is still efficient when he's a main focal point of the def- of what opposing defenses is facing. He's still efficient. He's still balling. He's still playing great defense. He's a phenomenal young guy. That, it's fine to say that. It's absolutely fine to say that because they've always said it about phenomenal young players. Yeah, even if we had to be on the 2023-2024 now revisionist label history thing that we do for some weird reason, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm glad I found the video and played it because promising is insane. I, I don't, I don't even know at the fuck, fuck point we just call him Chet, and just just let Chet be Chet, but like literally no other labels, no other uh pronouns, synonyms, anything like that. It's ridiculous. Um, I I, I just asked Shaq that if Chet was a point guard. Do we do we have this conversation? If Chet's a wing. Do you have this conversation? If Chet is just a four, do we even have this conversation? But I don't know what it is. Oh, I'm sorry, I hit my uh, bag of chips here. I don't know what it is about Shaq and centers, but there's no way he's insecure about a guy like Chet, considering he, they don't play anything alike. From from the conversations I've heard about Shaq, he really cares about that big man conversation more than anything. Because he's on some like, man, I don't even care about that all time list. Where do I rank amongst big men specifically? Well, I think, I think it's more than that. I think Shaq also praises people that remind, like, play like him. But it, it's in an era where that doesn't, like, he likes Giannis. Like, he likes Embiid, I think. But, like, mm-hmm. that's, and I think that that's why Shaq went so hard at, um, on, at Zion, when Zion had the in season tournament sinker, and Shaq was like, Hey, man, I used to be like, I see myself like in you, like, I used to be like you, whatever, uh, on it, like, whatever. I feel like that's the kind of thing where he's like, he's like seeing the the lack of a like power big men mm-hmm. in the league, you the know? power big, the power. I big, think, yeah. I also think it's a um, it is an insecurity because of how his career panned out, how he can now in hindsight sit there and say that he underachieved in some aspects and he didn't given his all he still has regrets about his career and i don't know it just seems like to me every time there's a very talented big man a big man that has a lot of tools and quite frankly I ain't gonna lie, some of these guys that can lap you as in terms of bigs in terms of scoring because he will talk about that he will harp on that oh, i wasn't able to pass x y and z in terms of scoring that really eats me once these niggas start eating once they once they can start passing him i promise you watch how you start hating Jokic is phenomenal the day Yoki's just approaching, passing Shaq, watch him hate. Watch the hate that comes out of his heart. He can't help it. He only like Kareem when LeBron passed him. Kareem looked so got well, one, Kareem just old. But Kareem did not look entertained by what was going on. Kareem don't like loud noises, though. So you could have popped a balloon next to him and he would have looked don't like up. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I him being 70, like 9 trillion years old. Yeah, he's just old. He just no. He don't like shit no more. I do want to extend the clip because, or make it into two, but Bezos was right about Shaq like having issue with his place in the it's big man category. Um, You're the fifth best center in the history of the NBA. He said Kareem, Wilt, Lajuan, and Moses Malone. What did you think after hearing that? Let's just get straight. To get me off that, I had to learn how to see if there's some truth in the criticism. I disagree. However, Kareem, 
Yes. Wilt, only because he has more points than me. That's the only thing that upsets me about my career. Because he has more points, I'll let that slide. I'm the most dominant center ever. I don't ever want to hear another name again. So that will put me at number three. I passed Hakeem Olajuwon up. Most was alone. I passed him up four, five, six years ago before I retired. Me, I will put myself at number three. Damn. I'd like to hear the argument on Hakeem. Why he thinks yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, 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 Hakeem. I think I you mean, mean he passed him up in points. I think he, in terms of total points. So uh, he's just ranking by points. I, I mean, if you tell, if you think about the standard he holds, the only reason why he has Will, he thinks he's the most dominant center, but the only reason he'll put Will over him is because he didn't outscore him. I would think that that's the standard he holds himself by. W he ain't bring up, I mean, he ain't bring up rebounds. He ain't bring up blocks, minutes, nothing. He was just, I mean, Kareem, yeah, no, he was the number one scorer of all time for the longest. Will only because he out he had more points to me. But um when he says Hakeem, I think he means pass him up in terms of scoring. We can look at the all time center list and scores. If Hakeem fuck around is four and five, then yeah, my guy, like I, I would assume that's what he means. Yeah, and I'll let me be clear because we, we are we are dunking on him for hating on the new era of bigs, but if I'll give him some credit here, it'd be weird if Shaq was like, Oh yeah, I'm seven. Oh yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Um, Victor's better than me too. Like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm fine with Shaquille yeah. O'Neal caring about where he he is in all time conversations for sure. I'm and, all for him one step further, saying I'm the best one. Fuck, fuck these other niggas. What are you talking about? However, when we're talking about a young talent and consistently every time, and gr- granted, the Superman shit, I guess, is a trigger. But even when we're not throwing the Superman label around, and consistently young talent especially at the center position getting kind of put down because they don't play exactly like Shaquille O'Neal or they're the next Shaquille O'Neal dog relax they'd have to do a lot like dog you're fuck it you're Shaq bro (laughs) they'd have to do a lot to get to that level I don't know why he uh finds the need to do this I think ultimately he has insecurities but I do agree that we do throw these labels around, you know. Too, too oh, him? Oh, oh, I die by that. Yeah, like when I was on my him crusade, the, one of the most triggering shits was uh, people going around calling the, the 13th best player, the, the 20th Rosen best player, is him. the 30th Hi. best player <laughs> him. All right, dog. Like, like, all right, look, 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 man. Everyone can't be him. It's the same reason why and we talked about it. I'm not going to uh, bring it back around. But, like, when we had the Becky Hammond clip, there's a reason why the idiots that are still cooking her for not saying Jalen Brownson is a 1A on a championship team. It's because everyone can't be. Like, if, yeah. if everyone cannot be, the, the NBA championship doesn't change every single season to every single character, player, build archetype. It's impossible. Fucking possible. Even if it was possible, it ain't happened yet. So so by, by all means, bro, it, this, shit, this shit is so... Shit is so ridiculous how um, everyone gets called phenomenal, but... um. I'm not going to lie. I, at the end of the day, if we have to be obtuse and go to the word promising, that still not being a line that we can cross is crazy. By but, the way, uh, the Pistons are currently down 29 to the Houston Rockets. God. Oh, 29. We are what? so back, baby. <laughs> well, um, uh, another thing to add. Reverse. Add. Reverse. Oh. Um, <laughs> ball balls on the court. I what? Bobo, Bobo's playing basketball, baby. Oh, All man. right. And with, and with that, <laughs> and with Bobo on the basketball court. And, um, I don't want this to be let's keep it a sage. Um, does anyone have a topic that they wanted to uh, bring up? If not, oh. I have something up here. I, I do. I, I got just something real quick. Just a quick hitter. Um, right. I, it's a new segment I want to implement going into the new year on the pod. Something I do want to do differently. It is uh, Damo's question of the day. And I'm going to ask you guys, uh, everyone hands up. I don't want no cheating. Y'all can't Google it. I don't want y'all to Google it. Um, the question of the day, as Omar keeps his hands down because he's a cheater. There we go. Um, question of the day, which mammal has the longest orgasm? What? Isn't it a type of fish? It's a type of fish, ain't it? I'm going to give you a couple seconds to think about it, and I'm going to give you a multiple choice. You know, multiple choice. A... No. Nobody should correct me. It's a fish. Fish is a stupid answer, y'all. A, a pig, B, a monkey, C, a horse, D, a dog. Which mammal has the longest orgasm? Well, I am a a dog. (laughs) So uh, 
I'm yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say because I know what I do. I'm gonna go ahead and say me. Final answer. Long workouts is what you do, buddy. That's crazy. Uh, souls, souls. I'm a cross out horse. I think. Uh, nah, let me not say that. What were the first oh two? What were the first two? Oh <laughs> 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 the, the path I was going to with that, I did not want to go down today. Uh, what was the first two options? Pig, mm. horse. Mm. What was it? Pig, horse, mm. um, dog, mm. or fuck, monkey. So it's not monkey, um, obviously. I'm going to go pig, bro. I don't know. Okay. Oink, oink. It's oh. pig. Oh. I'm going to go pig as well. It does sound pig. like it's pig. All shows up. Omar. It's pig. It's pig. Pig, pig. Oink. All right. Well, the answer is the domestic pig, Suscorfa domestic, domestica, do, domesticus? Domestic do, pig. D-O-M-E-S-T-I-C-U-S. Do, 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 Y'all pretty much. Nice. Latin. Sound like the Latin out here. Domestic. All right, that it, um on Pig average Latin. an orgasm <laughs> facts on average an orgasm this orgasm lasts thirty minutes but it can last as long as ninety minutes. So mm. next time you lie, that's half not an hour fun. Nothing. Yeah, that's not <laughs> fun, bro. I'm gonna get mad. <laughs> So, uh, I never had. I'm saying, stop, bro. Like, all, right, bro. Hey, all right, bro. Hey, stop. Try to go for a walk or something. Like, god damn. Just imagine, like, you a 16 year old. You trying to beat your shit for the first time, maybe even younger, right? And you did get. You don't know like, what it feels like. Like, like you mm. don't know what, what it feels like. About? So you do this shit, <laughs> and then you're like trying not to get caught. You paranoid and shit, because you don't normally do this shit. And then your mom walk, mom get to call your phone. Yeah, can you come downstairs? You're like, oh shit. <laughs> still, <laughs> still, still, still coming. coming. <laughs> still coming. It's been 15 minutes. I'll never do it again. I, right, start. I would stop. I would stop for life, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that was it. That's all I had. I just, I just had one I, question. I, I was gonna try to work with that. One. I, I, I don't know how to pivot <laughs> out of that. Uh, anyone else had a topic? Uh. Off top, if, if you don't, don't got anything or no. that's fine. No more. You got a topic? Oh, I wanted to talk about view botting on Twitch. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh, oh I want to talk about uh, stable Ronaldo. Uh, what you call it? Pocket watching uh, Jinxie, man. I, ain't gonna I watched it's it a lot of money. What you think? Nothing that really to talk about. I was yeah. just. Okay, okay. It's a lot of money, man. That's a ten millionaire right there. A ten millionaire? You know that's not yes. how taxes work, right? Oh my God! You becoming like Jay, bro. Every time money get, uh, but, but, but that's without taxes. Right? You win the lottery, but don't forget about taxes, right? Like, uh, all right, bro. God but it's true. You can win five million dollars, but you know you can put taxes on it, so it's really like. <laughs> oh, like and, the and, I'll, taxes. and I'll say this too, though. Like, I mean, do people not think that those streamers? Do people not think streamers are getting money for real at this point? Like, no, nah, but putting a number to it. Because even if he said 500k, okay, that's still a shit ton of money. But the way he broke it down, 1.6. Let me show the clip. Because, I mean, I, and, you know, mind you, I feel like I can read it better than, like, maybe the average person. So you're right. You're right. I'm downplaying it. But come on, bro. You got to be a little you gotta be a little slow if you don't. People people really saw that and was like, what? GC is rich? I saw, I saw, I'm not surprised that he's rich. No, no, no. I didn't say, I didn't, I didn't say you. I didn't say you. Yeah, a lot of people figured out that, like, I'm, I was in, I didn't see this when you posted it. I saw this in TikTok earlier today. People were like, Jinxie is rich? What? What do you have the most of on Twitch and he has like this much money? What the fuck? Like, yeah. That's what I am, like Jeff Bezos. I'm not giving you five. Let's see, 100,000 subs. You probably stream around 250 hours. Minimum average viewers probably to 30,000 or 45,000 with a three minute ad ran every single eight minutes, approximately 22 minutes and 0.5, which is 30 seconds, 22 minutes and 30 seconds every hour, which equivalents to 10 hour streams per day. Realistically speaking, you're probably roughly making with 100,000 subs by this month alone, probably 750,000 to 1.2 million. Because it's December, probably on the higher end of 1.2 million this month. Approximately, you bring in your sponsorships, that's probably over a couple hundred grand. You go to YouTube, that's probably over a couple, that might be half a mil, honestly, with both channels combined. Nah, it's December, maybe like 300,000. And then I think you're on an organization, they're probably paying you. Decent bucks, maybe. I don't know. It could be on the rough range of thirty thousand to seventy thousand. So approximately, I made like around one point five million to two million dollars just this month. That I'm leading. And if the IRS is watching, this is all a joke, of course. 
bro. Nah, that you can't, have, that you can't need, fed out. Yeah, hey, you can't fed out and do nah, that, man. I need that needs to have the the Shikamaru music in the background, bro. That <laughs> man, was cooking. Bro, bro, definitely sat there like these <laughs> he bro, said, bro, thirty <laughs> seconds. <laughs> you just come on right now. <laughs> That was um that was the level of pocket watching chat when we talked about it on the pod that I do not agree with. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. That's, that's that's crazy. Crazy. That is crazy levels of pocket. In my opinion, that's crazy levels of pocket watching to just drop all that unpromptly on stream for what? Just so that people know, <laughs> it's crazy. There was no gatekeeping. There was no he didn't make access for five hundred dollars with me. There was no reason for him to break it down like that. That was crazy pocket watching. In my opinion, that's crazy pocket. Watching. Boy, uh, it was fine. I ain't gonna yeah, wrong with it. If you, if you yeah. heard anyone, and we agree to disagree. We it's all, it's all public info. <laughs> someone just did the math, and I was about to say like, the information oh, is legitimately right there. Like, if you decided to not do the math because you, uh, oh, um, what's the call? You done said it like four or five times. What anime are you watching right now? Uh, right now I'm getting through uh JJK, of course. Mm. Um, you know I watch a little bit of death note a little bit of black clover but i'm sorry i'm starting to like um oh i'm like what eight episodes in the yu yu haka show um the i think i need to no oh, just first watch oh, i gotta wow. like i gotta like a there's some classic anime that like i just don't get to where it's like oh man i that really has escaped me so th those are the those are in the rotation right now honestly. who's your glorious king you get one glorious king oh, yeah. shikamaru that's my that's my oh shit. yeah I like I like that's the thing. I go back to Naruto. <laughs> I go I go up I go back to Naruto and like Shikamaru fights just they feel different in terms of like it feels like okay oh, they are after a while after a while if you get to a point where like the kunai knives start they don't do anything right Shikamaru is like actually there is Sasuke fights do have strategy as well but I think Shikamaru is like oh he like heavily need strategy or else it's he's cooked, he can do. right yeah, yeah she right. <laughs> chicken so that's why strategy right I, that's why batman i, I love no that a bit he's batman with no money and <laughs> in shadows <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's that's, that's the <laughs> nah nah give me I, I, time. Give me that's who i got I'll even give a uh, Shikamaru this. He don't even have like you know. I have to stay alive armor like with Sasuke. Sasuke should die like ten times, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I love him, but he should have died. Um, damn, damn Shikamaru though. Bro. That was yeah. I'm the, yeah, I was like uh, Shikamaru at one. Uh, in I'm terms of in terms of like in terms of like favorite characters, where I where like every time that that whole that whole arc where it was like basically just Shikamaru Shippuden, like I like that whole arc. Yeah, Hidan versus Asuma, and then like he has some like cool fights. I know they're not gonna like they're not gonna be in like people's pantheons, you know. But like Shikamaru versus Tamari, like that's a great fight. No, that was a good fight. Like that's a great fight, and it's like because it felt like it didn't depend on like ninjutsu, a lot. It depended on like strategy and skill with the mind and stuff like that. I like I like that kind of thing for anime. Um. Who else? Who else? You a thinker uh, for real. I can tell. I'm about to say, yeah, <laughs> like Madara. So, like, you a Madara type guy? I like, uh, I like the, I like Madara fight, but it's different. I feel like it's a little bit Sasuke actually, like his Sasuke versus Datara fight. There's like it's a like, lot of, uh, there's like a, a lot of underrated strategy in that fight too. Yeah. Um, where he was like, he was like using his like electricity needles to deactivate the clay or something i was like hey how are he doing that like, i didn't even that mattered uh, anymore and then they, he, they went back to it i was like what he actually been that's why he put his sword there it's like i'm like y'all adding just different y'all adding a whole bunch of different stuff right there. While, while we're having nerd talk and this is not a topic um yeah. i don't like your hat man I'm not gonna lie i got it like no, no no i just got in back into smash i'm on a training arc i'm trying to be be back on timing and i ain't gonna lie my chat cooked me that little puff ball that nigga get punched two times. He's with the woo. I, I can't. I can't. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, bro. The the Ooh. arc sage is in right now. He's trying to get hoes next DreamCon, dog. <laughs> He's optimizing what? for hoes at DreamCon. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna lie, man. Say, say Jeezy for real, man. Super Smash Bros. Nah, nah, nah. The, the pivot you're going at, man. What? I fuck with it. I fuck with it, man. I like it. I like it, man. I was, I 
was making a one-off comp. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm saying, trying, man. I, I, yes, I I'm trying to be a dream slut. I, 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 I don't mind the cosplay. He said, that's what Burnley's do out here? Oh, watch. <laughs> watch this. <laughs> watch this. this, this that's what like, y'all don't like that for Dante? Watch this. Let me bring up my. Yeah, yeah already said I was way more exposed. Oh, Omar, I have it. If you, if, if you don't <laughs> bring, up the, uh, bring up the exposed view body thing, y'all are sick. But I will say, I confess, I'm not gonna lie, and maybe it was just me because I'm the only single man on the fly right now. But hey, I was looking around. I'm like, I know the Zane plan. Yeah, impossible. <laughs> Call me, beat me. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, motherfuckers was motherfuckers out there, man. I ain't gonna lie. So we're not gonna we're not gonna watch this whole video, of course, but. There's been an epidemic on Twitch, specifically in the 2K sphere, specifically in the 2K community. <laughs> Exposing all you guys. But for real, though, um, the 2K community going crazy from shoot. Um, I thought y'all said this game was dead, question mark. Um, I don't know if a lot of you get what's going on here, but uh, a lot of you guys are view behind, bro. 600 view, 45 viewers. Who is a who is a nonchalant? Mo buckets possibly view botting, possibly. I don't think Mo buckets is view botting, to be honest. He's always been steady around at 400, 500, you know, somewhere in there up to like a thousand, give or take. Same thing with ATL. Juan Pasai, I don't know who that is, so maybe they're view botting, maybe they aren't. Um, Chalk, 264 viewers on a rerun. Rerun? But, uh, Y'all know you're nasty. <laughs> Questionable. Uh, more viewers on a rerun than Splashy on an actual live stream. So we got that. Uh, she loves Shifty. Also, a lot of people, a lot of people here above 100 viewers, you know. Um, I'm just saying, there is a lot of people above 100 viewers. Now, that's not saying that's impossible. I know there's people that, you know, they had some good, decent amount of viewers in, in 23. Um, so I'm not. I'm just. I'm just saying. You know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Now that now that video is 30 minutes. Um, a 32 minute Twitter video. One is crazy, but two. Wait, what? Yes, 32 30. minutes. <laughs> yes, 30, I watched all of it. That's the sad part. I really watched I, all of nah, it. I ain't gonna lie. You watched the whole. <laughs> oh, yeah. watched not the on one point two five, like straight one X. <laughs> Oh, nigga, I woke up. I was bored of shit. I was like, throw this shit on while I make breakfast and change my daughter type shit. Like, yeah, I watched the whole thing. So other things that they were... Yeah, I, wa- I watched it on stream. The other thing we're talking about, and I just want to play a little game right quick. We're, this is Twitch, the 2K uh, uh, tab live. This is us doing this live. I think mm-hmm. Joseph Nosif has that many people. <laughs> Joseph <laughs> But one of the ones that he pointed out was Chalk. So I just wanted to go to Chalk. This has nothing to do with like Damo's feeling or whatever. Yeah, yeah nothing at all. Nothing. So at all. this is Chalk's room, right? And this mm-hmm. is Chalk will be back later. This is a, a stream. It is 954. The, the what's what's important is the the comment section. Now I will say Chalk has more comments than ooh. That's where it stops. Chalk has more comments than the other ones do. There's some bots in here, of course, but Chalk has more comments oh. than the other ones do. But you're telling me that 424 people are watching a rerun. Right? Um fuck it. Let's not go commenting ahead. and not chatting on Twitch. Nope. 424 people. That chat is not rolling at all. Mm. Uh fuck it. I don't know any of these guys. Let's go to OFAB. I just picked random ones. 195 people. No, this is the chat. Y'all see the chat, right? Y'all can see how I'm many. Say, I see the, I'm looking at the times. Yeah. I'm making I gotta look through and make sure I'm not bugging. That just says yeah. 915, 943. Ah, and TSO now, Gold the Dragon. Uh, <laughs> one from but is it maybe, maybe it's like that in the 2K community though? Because I don't know. When I was streaming to YouTube, hey, like, motherfuckers, like I would have 200 in there. People would not be chatting up. I don't know. Maybe this okay. is go to Joseph Nosa. This is hip. The, yeah, this is hippie season streaming to 260 with only two comments. Like that's my fishy be souls. That's not. That's not fishy at all. Hey, Sage knows what I'm talking about, bro. The the YouTube chatters. Yeah. So. When they locked in, they're locked in for real. I don't know. All right, all right, all right. And here's yeah, Joe so. knows with the co- with the chat rolling. This is eight hundred or nine hundred and forty three. This is a steady stream of comments coming in at. Is all it time. rolling? 
Nah, let me, let me, not, let me, not, let me. Nigga, this is this for nine forty three. This is multiple comments at nine fifty five, nine fifty four, nine fifty four, nine fifty four, nine fifty three, nine fifty three. Okay, at no point of any of the other that's people that's did anyone even else even chat. And even if you want to say, and I wish Omar would have went to one other person just for clarification. Even if you want to say, oh, well, Joe knows let's have two times the amount of anybody else. So maybe that's why his chat will be moving compared to other people. You will still be able to find another person between the 200 to 90 range where their chat is still moving more frequently than people that have two to 300 and the shit hasn't moved in 30 minutes. As 15 minute sections where no one chats at all, not one person out of 200. Come on, that's well, crazy. I'll say this as a person that gets the whole sage and that thing. So, so y'all cook souls for it. I'm not a hundred percent with them, but I'm probably more than 50. Y'all, there's some games, and 2K is one of them. Them niggas predict all right. Ah, so let me sit back and watch Zibes, and then them niggas is just there, but they are not. Typing. I, I can only just like I don't have a factual evidence for you. Maybe mm -hmm. I can send you a VOD or I don't know what to do. But um, I know y'all like like whether it's TSO niggas all in the chat or anything like that. I don't know what I don't know how to get proof. But I promise you, niggas literally will do their predictions. They'll hear the the start of the game. They'll hype up the game. Once that game start, them they're niggas locked. chilling and mm -hmm. they're just they, they're just locked in. So I will say that this being around the two K thing is a little. Sketchy for me in terms of just running to view bots. I will say, however, he probably ain't just wrong. He probably ain't just lying. But his dick sucks still to me. At 32 minutes. <laughs> 32 <laughs> minutes is crazy. First things first. That's a literal film. Um, And if that isn't enough to sway you of it being dick sucked, the idea that some of these people, especially in the 100 uh, viewer tier, don't just have a non-active ass chat, it's kind of crazy. Now I, I don't know anything about the replay shit. Though. I don't know, but I don't even know. The rerun, yeah. That. The rerun, the, the rerun shit. That is the, that's the one. And watch the whole video. He kind of explains like different scenarios, whatever. So the reruns, I'm a hundred percent. I'll be the person to say it, bum ass nigga. You know who I'm talking to. I do believe that nigga is definitely view button with the reruns. With the reruns, it's crazy because even compared to um PewDiePie, and we all know who the fuck PewDiePie is. He's pulling PewDiePie, damn near PewDiePie numbers doing reruns. And we all know damn well that nigga is no PewDiePie. So let's, that's so I, you can call it hate if you want to. I'm just being honest. Now, the other people, the people constantly in the hundreds, that's why I put that tweet out and I hit y'all up on it. Yo, be careful, y'all streaming 2K. Apparently, if you had 100 viewers and they don't know who you is, you view button. I do feel like there's a bit of dick suck there just because you don't know this person. You're going to assume their viewers are fake because you don't know them. That's whack as fuck. But. As a person who recently did stream 2K, and I've streamed 2K before, I can say, say I do feel you and so a little bit in terms of the chat could be slower, but not existed. I haven't experienced that. If y'all have, cool. But I haven't experienced with, none. Me yeah. with 40, 50, 60 viewers playing 2K, there's no reason why my chat should be more engaged in the two hours of me running 2K and playing the finals. And niggas, and it's just Zides. It's not even niggas in there just trying to react deadly to the game, but just Zides in general. Now, if you want to say I have a stronger community at 50 and 60 that's more engaging, hey, absolutely fair, I guess. But I don't know. I wish Omar would have went to a couple more people just so we actually see the difference because watching that 30-minute video and actually going to look, it is a definite difference between a lot of these people with 150 to 100 viewers on Twitch and the shit that they're doing. Some of these niggas dead ass, there is no activity in the chat. As we've seen, for 30, 15, 30, 40 minute intervals, that's crazy. No matter who you, that is insane. If all you niggas all be hovering around the 100 tier, I don't think there's any other, <clears throat> there's no other, I, I want to say in terms of the pop, I'm used to be super popular, but not as popular no more. I don't know what frame or what group you will group 2k with in terms of games on twitch if it's something popular or whatever it is but i can't find another tier around the same size of 2k where it's that many consistent niggas at 100 or so and it's like this like you go on call of duty right now the niggas at 100 if you go look in their chats they're a little exactly. more engaged yeah. it, it, it's more active than that it doesn't have to be bang 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 but nigga five minutes in between is acceptable like, it's not going 10 minutes and nobody in a 100-plus-something stream is saying anything. That's crazy. Now, I will I, say I, this, and I'm going to let Kofi go here, but I just want to get this because I know I'm going to forget it. Um, the I the idea that um, if you're not a 2K tuber, that um, that 
hey, you got to be botting. That's just dick sucked. I, I, I forgot to call that on my initial claim. But, yeah, like if I stream right now and I put 2K in the category, he would be like, who's TSO Sage? Oh, yeah, you're a bot. Um, I just want to make <laughs> sure. Like, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's but, literal but, dick but it's, but it's not. But it's, but it's not, though, because the community ruined it. But I'll get to that when I get to that. Yeah, and, hey, hey, fair enough. Go ahead. Go. Yeah. I, I have a question for, like, I'm not really – in the 2k twitch or youtube community like i'll stream 2k every once in a while but i wouldn't call myself like i'm not you will never catch me playing park ever like i wonder if Same. like there are certain like games on twitch where you pay attention to chat sometimes but there are certain i feel like there's certain like la like moments where if you're playing like a park game for a wager how much like are you paying attention to chat and like risking that distraction and in turn if you're not really paying attention to chat at the time is it worth it to even comment i think like I, do you think you do, do you think that do you think that there's like an aspect to that though if like if you just watch in and the person is like really really locked in on the game and like they're not really like they may be like they going to wait until chat type well i see i see that yeah. i think the answer is a thousand percent no um Got there's be, only because even in even in this type of forum that we have right now I, they know because we we acknowledge it or allude to it a lot mm -hmm. but we don't we don't interact when we get to podcasting specifically we don't interact with chat like as traditional streamers do we're not mm -hmm. looking down they're often referencing oh look at what cardiac just said about we don't do that too often to where uh, 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 it would be a thing to note, but the chat, if you have it pulled up, it's rolling. It is going, yeah. they're having their own conversation when Michigan lost or when Michigan yeah. beat Alabama, Old they were, time. they had their whole conversation going in there. So That's while good. I, while I do agree that like, if you're not necessarily, uh, uh, saying anything to chat, it might give them less incentive to chat. I, I have to disagree with the premise solely because oh shit, shouts out the fat piggy. Fat piggy. Forgive me. Oh my god, <laughs> ten gifted. Big uh, four minutes left. Yeah, I have Don't to be have orgasms. To, no, I have to say, keep it coming. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, gross. <laughs> I, I have to disagree because they'll legitimately start their own conversations, talk about, and I think we've all done this as streamers ourselves. We'll be talking about something, look down at chat to to get some clarification. And they are legitimately talking about. Damn, he kept he kept, he it, coming. Really kept it coming. <laughs> damn, <laughs> he, no, he really come, coming. come, 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 oh, come. Right, right, no, come. Right, um, they'll have their Don't own stop. conversation. They'll have their own conversation. Thirty minutes. That's no, they were doing stop. that just now, Omar. They were talking about uh, Jujutsu Kaisen earlier. Obviously, brought up the Alabama thing. They were doing it just now. Yeah. So I'll, I'll That's even nice. say. That's good. To be somewhat hypocritical, I'll even say no. The chat moving that slow, that merits me to believe he's not 100% just lying. I just still think it's a little bit of gawk. But I'm going uh, to let Omizi handle why that you can even argue I'm wrong. And that's how the community is supposed to be because you weren't wrong on that part. Go ahead. Well, well it's, it's, not, it's not gawk. And if parts of me doesn't have a problem with you botting because at the end of the day, the real creators are going to rise up to the top. Yeah. But the problem is... Part of the problem, like what Sage just said, if I cop in and I start doing 2K, I automatically get the stigma that I'm a view botting. And that's crazy. It's not gawk on the person who's assuming his part. Everybody in this community is view botting to the point. And if we watch the video more, there are legitimate streamers that are saying, well, fuck it. If they're going to view bot, Twitch isn't going to step in. I'm going to view I'm going to do it. Yeah. That's... I'm going to do it. Uh, ah, yeah. okay. So at that point, fuck it. Everybody's doing it. Literally everybody is doing it. So that that's one. Two, when it's time for the sponsors, late quarter one, quarter two, whatever they're saying, okay, we need to delve out sponsors to these guys, et cetera, et cetera. When so and so with X amount of uh, uh, people watching live gets dealt the subscribe or the the uh, brand deal money, the sponsorship money, and you don't, and you know the difference is, hey, X person really only streams to sixty nine people. He really only does. But because he's view botting, now this money is going over here. And then when that doesn't translate to a good ROI for that company, they won't look it's at the 2K community else, again. Man. It's fucking everybody. It's, it's when the nigga takes the, the $20 deal to, to post on their platform 50 times. And then it also doesn't give a good ROI. So now they're coming to us. Oh, hey, we gave we gave Bobby Bobby, you know, this amount of money for that uh, 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 amount of posts. Why can't y'all do it? He fucked it up for us, just think, as think, a general. 
I think more than any other community too. Like the 2K community is very nasty when it comes to like copy pasting what other creators are doing. Like specifically with thumbnails, dog. I've never seen a community where all the thumbnails look the same, bro. Player highlighted, outer glow, badge, 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 or nine, 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 nine. <laughs> like they, they, color, they literally have two K graphic color. designer clans of just two K designers who can edit the same way. Like I've, I've never seen that before. Like shit is crazy with the damn editing just, too. I'm about to say, damn, just the thumbnails. The ideas and the content. Yeah. The yeah. content's the same. And you can say, oh, I mean, there's only so much you can do. If you look over in these other communities, other gaming communities, awesome. it is nowhere near as bad as it is in 2K. Every, like, it is a difference between having similarities and being forced to do the same thing because you're playing the same. There's only so much I can do playing fucking Fortnite. There's only so many ideas I can have to sit and play Fortnite. There's only so many ideas I can have to play a game of, of, of Call of Duty or, or, or Warzone. Warzone. But to sit there with the same exact idea, today we're going to get on the Luca build and we're going to drop 50 points. <laughs> oh, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> today I'm going to let AI build my jump shot. <laughs> like, I, everyone's doing that. Like, everyone's doing that exact video. To take, it, to take it even a step further to where they really have changed the whole um, idea behind 2K content creation to make it to where you probably will only succeed if you do this box now i know you could you could grow etc cetera, etc cetera, but the the idea is hey if i do if i do 2k content i the only lane that i have is this so they're so specifically in part because yeah. the the my league um youtube like there's a lot more originality and like i, lo I love my time. eras i love the my eras the rebuilds i love that yeah e e like there's a difference between click uh med if y'all know who med is shout out to med mm -hmm. there's a difference between That's that me. Med, Kenny, and like, hey, f fuck it, we're in it. Me and Sage doing like a rebuild. To be honest. Okay, but, uh, okay, so what about the, the levels you? under y'all, yeah. though? Like, I, I would feel, I mean, I'm not saying y'all necessarily in the 1%, like a click or whatever, but yeah, the clicks and, and the, the top 1% or whatever, I mean, y'all might be 1% or whatever, but after y'all, that's where it really determines on the creativity in the community. If everybody else is just copying click, souls and Sage, Med, and other person you named, then there, is there really variety? But I, I think with I think with the thing about like my league and the rebuilds and the my eras is that two people can do the same video idea, but it comes out completely different. Pretty I think different. that that's my fa that's my fascination with like simulations and my eras. Yeah. That's what I do for my job. It's like being able to do the simulation. Someone could like do my exact idea, but even if they tried to do the exact same things, the AI would do different things. I think that, yeah. that like there's a little bit more variety into like, yeah, like the videos might be the same. However, you're doing it in your own. It's more like a sandbox of kind of thing, I feel like. Yeah, to, to, to paint a narrative, Domo, let's say all five of us, I was going to use the Pistons, but I know Chad tired of hearing that team. Let's say we all do a Matt. <laughs> let's say we all do a, a Spurs rebuild, right? Um, All five of us do a Spurs rebuild. This is how crazy different the shit can be. Me and uh Kofi, we could have Victor Wembanyama as the thumbnail. B Souls, swear to God, Kawhi Leonard might be his thumbnail because Kawhi signed back with them. Omar might have fucking Giannis because he signed Giannis. So these things get yeah, uh, I, I feel entirely it. I different. Get it. I, I, but I, I, in the two K community, for anybody that would go, well, the player builds are different. Man, let me tell you something now. No, they're, not. they're no, they're not, and, no, and that's the not. worst part. That the, the, even if you wanted to try to die on that argument, they truly aren't because. And this is the part that Omar didn't bring up. I think the 2K community puts itself in a box every year when they go from having fun to everybody has got to be the greatest of all time. And when they do that, now you've created an entire game that is never taken that seriously when compared to the other games. Like, my God. But now everyone has to be comp at it. So as a result, you're like, I'm better than this dude. No, nope, I'm better than this dude. I'm better than this dude. And then ultimately... The only content that's different from uh, my part going to stage uh, best build videos is wagers uh, just to see who mm -hmm. truly is the best that no one ever was and some Ash Ketchum shit. And once you kind of find that out, you don't care anymore. And that's even if you truly care about who the best solo player in the world is, considering that the and this is the worst part, 2K is just most of the time viewed as a bad game. So, so it's it's a bad game with the toxic community that's only competitive. That's just uh, that is a a formula for disaster. Well, I'll add on to that too. Um, my fault. I'll mm -hmm. add on to that too on 
the state of the community and how they go from having fun to having to be the best. Even I would say the big one of the bigger differences too in the 2K community compared to other ones. And I'm gonna just say Call of Duty because that's probably that's probably the only game I play as much as 2K. When you look at the Call of Duty community, even with the YouTubers that put out the best kits, the best the best blueprints for guns and everything like that, and that trickle downs in the community, the casual gamer or the niggas that are still having fun will still use other guns. Or right. they'll still use very it's still a variety of different shit being used. Yes, because of skill-based matchmaking. If you are a sweat, I'm sorry, my guy. Everybody's using the bass pee in your lobby because they're all sweats. But people, it, it'll still be that subsection of people or the general public or the casual that is playing the game just to have fun. So I'm gonna use the Uzi, I'm gonna use the uh, I'm gonna use whatever gun I want to because I can. That's still that culture there. On 2K, it's so bad. Not even just the comp niggas. The niggas that just want to have a solid time at the game and be decent at the game have to make the same builds as everybody else or you're not going to be able to be you. If I'm a big man who, bro, I, hey, I grew up watching Shaq. I'm, I'm making me my Shaq build. Fuck it. I go out there. Don't nobody want to play with your big ass. If A, you don't get no. every rebound and set monster screens or B, can't shoot. If you can't shoot, what good? What use do I have for you? You got a baby that can't shoot. You are cancer on the game. I make a guard that can't shoot. I'm cancer on the game. Why am I playing with you if you can't shoot? You feel like you can't compete. Therefore, you rely on the same builds as everybody else. So it's not even everyone trying to be the best in the world. Niggas, the casual gamer has to make a shot create yeah. three-level threat. The casual gamer has to make a floor space and slasher. A casual gamer got to make a variation of a spot-up threat now because that that's the that's the only way you can even get any win or have fun in this game. Well, I, think, I, I, I think. Oh, oh everybody. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think yeah. that there's also an added element in 2K, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't play Call of Duty, but correct me if I'm wrong. Like, you can just switch out your guns, and not like, I can't like, I have to make a new build. Like, I can't just like, yeah. if I make a, I, if I delete a build, the VC doesn't come back to me, yeah. right? I think that that's also like a like an added thing where it's like, hey, you made you followed the best build YouTube video that you watch and. Congrats, your build is ass. Now you now not only did you waste your time, you also wasted your money. Mm. Like I, I wanted to um one I wanted one I was gonna disagree with Damo saying that the other communities are like this. I think gaming in general, the meta is the meta, and for the for the most part, people gravitate towards it. I know that there are some people that give that pushback, but especially like in the content creation realm. Uh, people like to push to the meta, but also people like seeing the meta. So I, but that that's a smaller point because we really haven't touched on the concept of uh, view botting. Like we, it, it, I haven't yeah, got those opinions. Is it bad? Is it good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I, uh, go ahead, say you can go first. Go. I'm go. not. I'm not. You know me, man. I'm, I'm a person that bets on himself time in and time out. I don't like to hear that view botting is essentially going on let alone view botting is going on unpunished however if it oh, is well, let me let me interject real quick apparently they mm -hmm. get paid because when they run the ads yeah they, they, count. Yeah. they count they count as more viewers in your shit yeah yeah, yeah. I, hey i yeah. was uh, it counts the ads still play even if yeah it's I'm, about, I'm about to say yeah so that uh, with all of that being said unfortunately i have to be a, a somewhat hypocrite because at the end of the day i will never hate on niggas getting their bag so I guess do what you got to do, but I will say it's nasty. But do, but do, but I'm not going to tell motherfuckers that, hey, if there's a way to make money, to not make the money. It, you see what I'm saying? Like, this is so cringe. I don't even think the math this would be so mapping, cringe, though. Bro. Like, ah. I, don't, I don't know the prices for view bots, bro, but like, thinking about our numbers on the back end and how many, how many viewers and hours you would need to stream to get, like, let's say $60. You, like, if 200. View uh if two hundred uh what you call if forty dollars got you two hundred bots, is that even worth like what are no, you I'll getting like twenty dollars? I'll tell you how much it, it is right now. On, I'm it gonna say, it depends it. on who you know because I'm pretty sure Wordu paid way less than that to do what he did. So I so as you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm just saying I feel like it, 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 you, you go. got it depends on you know who you know. I, I don't know. I would just say real quick as Omar pulls that up in terms of you buying. I look at it like scamming. Am I going to go on record saying you niggas are nasty, nefarious, bum-ass niggas for scamming? Yes, I am. That's crazy. Now, hey, a bag is a bag. I, that's crazy. Roll to affiliate? That's the... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Partner. Oh, weekly for up to 250 Oh, uh, no. Twitch got to do something. That's crazy. Yeah, that's $300 crazy. a month for 250 
And even if you run those ads, I mean, I Ooh, can see it if you stream yeah, nonstop. I, I can see it. But, but yeah, that's, nonstop. But that's, but that's, you, you but never that's what they're doing. That's so, the meta. But so the niggas that are doing it for real are the people streaming a lot. Like, I'm just saying, Mr. Rerun that we just seen, if you legit spend 30 hours of content time on reruns alone, like, yeah. But even, even the, the profit margins, maybe I just need to see it. But the profit margins would still be like forty bucks net. I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like that's a waste of time, bro. But especially if you're a dude that actually has a platform where you can do something with it, like chalk. It and feels it, like it feels yeah. like it feels like the same like opinion. I feel like I have the same opinion as when like you know back in the day you used to like buy people would buy Twitter followers, yeah. but it would it but it would be obvious that Twitter followers were bought, and it's like yeah, you have all these followers, but not the engagement. I feel like. Right. Well, the, in terms of the brand company deal perspective, I feel like a lot of like sponsors like are they don't they just they don't just stop at the followers. They're like send your metrics, like send your backends, like send the interaction, your engagement rate, because like especially on Instagram, yeah, yeah, because they're they're like is the amount of people that see it that's cool, but the amount of people that actually wholeheartedly engage and comment and all of that that matters way more to a lot of brands, especially. I feel so. It's like I'm. It's weird. I feel like I, even if it's even if it's small profits or small gains, I still think that's nasty as shit. That yep. there are people, big or small, whether you have a platform or you don't, you're trying to build it. I do think it's nasty as fuck that niggas are scheming the game and scamming the game in terms of getting whatever money they justify doing it as running as the bots. Now, I, I, again, I look at it like I look at scammers. That shit's crazy. Like, hey, you got it. Do you gain? I'm not gonna definitely won't come over here with that shit. Do you, I guess, but I'm gonna let you know I don't fuck with that. It's just wild. Yeah. And and the only thing I gotta say is like, and I, I spend a lot of time on my platform specifically talking about the truths about content creation as like, you know, I go through this journey, we go through this journey, et cetera, et cetera. The the idea of buying your way to the front of the line, buying the engagement, buying the the views, the followers, or whatever the case may be is insane because you never really spend time to get a community. So in theory, and mind you, these would be just people looking for the next scam and the next scam and the next scam. Twitch comes out with one TOS, one patch, one update, one shift, you're done. That's that's all it would take. And now you're trying to figure out how to you know, recoup the 500, whatever, you know, we'd have to do the math, but thousand dollars a month that you was making because you did view botting and it cost this much a week in order to do it. Um, but you're trying to figure out the next way to get that scam going instead of making content, putting building it out, community. building a community and doing the actual work. Like you, you, you've avoided doing the work yet again. Yeah. When are you gonna when are you gonna put the work in? Like when are you gonna do that and stop view by and honestly to me I if you gonna want it. huh you say oh they don't you know I agree if you're gonna view by I'm gonna view by till I get to like Kai's number yeah, I'm gonna uh, say uh, I'm, I'm view botting <laughs> shit you you're gonna think we got bust down rolly avalanches on top of that I'm gonna go a step further Omar if we gonna view bot let's really let's really fake the views for real I'm paying a hundred niggas hey yo just type <laughs> just catch his catch his eye just type some shit every now and then Hey, we will have a uh, 20, a circle in, a couple of you guys have two accounts. Let's get it popping. Let's have the most fake community of all time. Somebody going to see it. And when they see it, then we'll have a real community from then. But I think, you can I, buy comments I, th too, I, though. I think but, there's a level yeah. where it actually is beneficial because some uh, some people were speculating that about Neon on kick. Like uh, there, were, there were at points where he was averaging like 80, 90 K, but people were speculating in reality, he actually had like 30 K. But still, because of the the optics of yo, this motherfucker is averaging 80, 90 k, that you know that that went through the news cycle. People found out about Neon, and now like his legitimate numbers run from twenty to thirty five because they thought like this is the next big streamer. When you know at that point he already is, but but that's what I, but that's uh, what I'm saying. If that, if I'm gonna buy, I'm not gonna buy for two hundred. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna buy for two hundred. I'm legitimately gonna buy for a hundred k. You know what I'm saying? Get 100k on there. Well, what's this guy got going on? What's this guy got going on? Oh, he fucked to 2,000 viewers, and now I got 2,000. Hey, y'all didn't know. I was at 40 <laughs> before. Like I don't know. <laughs> I got a new. I bought a new floor. I Say bought like, a new floor. But, that's, but you, you know what's crazy though? Because they did have it on kick where 
they found out a way to whatever to terminate niggas that were oh yeah I don't know if y'all know this but ironically you kick fell remember off. that time that <laughs> fact but ironically I don't know if y'all remember that point in time where it was like yo who is this house full of white teenagers fighting each other who is these white dudes fighting in the street all the niggas were view bodying this whole time but because the optics of okay it's this community of uh, of motherfuckers fighting that has ten thousand live viewers and it built a buzz so when they did get hit these niggas really are following the 5k 7k but no one knew who they were before you didn't know who they were four months before that shit so it, I'm with you, Souls. It is a point where that shit genuinely is beneficial. None of these 2K niggas are using yeah. it at that point. That's the that's the nasty part. They're doing it just enough to justify paying for it. It's like, you know, I'm hey, I'm buying, I'm gonna buy that Twitter check just so I can make enough to rebuy it so I can keep it. <laughs> like that's all it is. The niggas are just doing just enough. Watch out for us in February. Shit. Yeah, I'm about to say hope. Oh. Hopefully they don't accuse uh, anybody here of botting anytime. Oh, so. I told y'all, man, if y'all streaming 2K, I'm about to start streaming 2K more. I'm, so I'm never putting, I'm going to be a just chatting 2K stream. Nah, nigga, I'm, I want them to think I'm view botting so they can come through and be like, what the fuck is going on? And see, oh, that nigga chat is rolling, rolling. Oh, okay. Oh, my <laughs> God. Look, man. Oh, look, man, if I'm a host the pod, one thing I'm going to do is we going to make sure that we clock in and clock out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kofi, Kofi Y, man. <laughs> Hey y'all! Thanks for having me, man. It's been a fun time. Nah, for sure, man. For sure. Nah, for man, for real. I'm glad to know you're a nerd. I didn't know that. Glad to, glad to <laughs> know you're the leads, man. I, I did, just, come on, come on, man. Look, uh, man. Come on, uh, man. We, we know we got the. We know we got the. We got the hell fight. yeah! Hey, 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 that is so crazy. Hey, oh yeah. You know, we keep we keep it all here. Hey man, uh, <laughs> go, go ahead. Remind the people where to find you, man. Uh, y'all can follow me on Twitch at Kofi Y. You can follow me on TikTok at Kofi Y. You can follow me on YouTube. You can just type Kofi. I think it will show up. I have a unique enough name, which is cool, which I love doing that. Um, and then Instagram is my full name. And then Twitter is Kofi as well. Also, I'm on Playback TV. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm on Playback. So I think I'm Friend Kofi the Y on there as well. So, yeah. Yeah, seeing you all blowing daily. Is this a streak thing or for the uh, – the? Uh, is this a streak thing for the Pistons? Uh, I was doing uh, – I was, I was trying to be like – Yo, at the end of the day, I'm gonna do playback. I'm gonna watch every game, uh, every oh. Pistons game. I think that's gonna be fun because even if even streak or no streak, I think it's it's still interesting because I feel like I I'm more interested in watching like bad basketball than good basketball at times. You know, X. I think it's sometimes it's just it's just like dang, this is what they this is what the team's up to. Like what's happening here? <laughs> like, I like that. that up in DC. Like, <laughs> like my my league pass alert. Sometimes like yo, how is Char how is Charlotte doing? Like you like look through and you're like oh it's like that like that's, that's sometimes more interesting. NBA me. community needs more more fans like you man. Trust and believe. That's not even dick suck. That's just objectively <laughs> true. As you look at my host Domo. Domo, say goodbye to the people, man. All right, Chad's been your mom for your nice thing, and we will be back Thursday. Hey, Kofi. Hey, man. I I just love to meet more Carolinians. You know, I'm a Carolina native myself. UMD, oh, UMD, yeah. UMD, 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 Carolina, UMD. Man. Oh, that's yeah, real. Yeah. That's real, man. Yeah, yeah. Love love to meet people from the best state, the hoop state. As people hoop would state. say, the hoop you state. No, know, you know, you know um, ball. You know facts, ball. facts, facts, facts. And um, another bad basketball watcher. Love it. I, more people need to watch <laughs> the teams that aren't getting national TV games. Man, look at the national TV schedule. Every team with four or less. What, what was it like? It was the less national TV games. I'm watching all of them. Fuck it. Somebody got to sort by. It's hidden. It's hidden, it's hidden treasure, man. It's treasure, yeah. dude. Sort you, you by less is insane. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's literally what I did. Sort by less. That's where we're gonna go. That's why I'm so high on the pistons. Niggas had like four games this year. But hey, and shout out to all eleven of the people that follow the new TikTok. We're going crazy on there. Right? <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> Our right, buying gang. All right, be so say goodbye to the people, man. Peace out, y'all. Appreciate y'all for coming through. Shout out to Kofi again for coming on. Um, yo, SNS night too, man. Right after the pod. Yes, yes, yes. Say he's going yes. live. I'm going live. I'm about to raid my my stream after this. So. And catch yeah, us you, there. You go do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go handle some business, but I'll be live in like five minutes. This is definitely weird to say. I don't know if this is gonna be tradition. Omar, say goodbye to the people, man. Hey, listen, man. Three years runner up. It's gonna be traditions. Um <laughs> appreciate the guests, appreciate Kofi. No, very interesting and insightful. Uh, would love to have more in-depth conversations. Kofi is a talker. I like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and then I'll be on sometime later this week. I need like a, at least a two day break, but I'll probably be bored. So I'll be streaming 
again and again and again. So, O Block, salute. Congrats on 1K in the subathon, by the way, my brother. Yeah, like 1K. Hey, I don't know what's going man. on. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Three out of four, just need one guy to get up there. Man. Really, four out yeah. of five, if you count the fives, man. Just say Sage Freeze? Be careful, man. They might think we view button. Low key, one day we, we should just we back. should just go live. I'm surprised no one has caught this out. Pod. No way, bro. Ninety viewers and they got a thousand subs. What's going on over here? <laughs> hey man, hey, it's, we keep it a buck for real. We keep the bucks for real. Look, man, mm. it's Van Boy TSO Sage back with the cringe one liners ten the podcast. Take care and stay blessed. SNS night two on the way. We got to do SNS versus me and potatoes one day. Definitely. Tonight, yeah. no cap. I'm about to say shit. Yeah, Ferb, you, you know what we gonna do today. Oh, hey. All right, <laughs> yeah. let me let me start the raid. <laughs> <laughs> let me go and start the raid, man. Stream stream bye, is up. Stream is up. Bye guys. Bye. Peace out, everybody. All right, peace out, y'all. All right, boom. Raid. Oh, I didn't even hear.